There we go. Sorry. The roll call. Chairperson Carpenter. Here. Chairperson Carpenter. I'm here. Vice Chair Johnson. Here. Uh, Member Lamberditti. Here. Member Leo. Here. Member Lugo. Here. Member Martinez is excused. Uh, now we have opened up for public comments. Do we have any public comments? We do not have any public comments. I guess we go into the consent calendar. And I'll make a motion to uh, approve the consent calendar. I'll second it. All righty. And I guess we move on to the business calendar items. Did you want to take a vote on the consent calendar? So a motion and a second. Um, sure. <laughs> Let's take a vote on the consent calendar. Can we get a motion in a second? You have the motion in a second. Okay. And so you just need to, you can just, you know, I'll see. Yeah. Yes. Aye. 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 Okay, then I suppose we move on to the business calendar items. Is that correct? Good evening, committee members. Um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the city's independent auditors. White Nelson D11s, and here, to, here tonight is Nitin Patel, partner with White Nelson D11s, and also Cassie Rademacher, also a partner with White Nelson D11s. They've been an honor for about four, this is, I believe, our fourth uh, fiscal year or audit. So they, have also, they were also engaged to perform the agreed upon procedures or AUP report on Measure X for fiscal year 18 19. And they'll be presenting the, their, their, their results or findings um, and a brief presentation as well. So without further ado. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, Natin Patel. I'm a partner with White Nelson D11s. And I'm here to make a short presentation of the Measure X results for June 30th, 2019. Uh, first, uh, just to give you some background, uh, we are a large regional firm. Uh, that is uh, in Irvine, and we specialize in audits of governmental entities. Uh, we are currently the financial statement auditors for the city for the year ended June 30th, 2019. The scope of our engagement was uh, to uh, look at management's assertions regarding compliance with Measure X. Uh, in that process, we agree the revenues and usage slash expenditures identified by management to source documents. The total measure X revenues as detailed in our report and schedule are 15.2 million, and the total measure X uses expenditures as detailed in the schedule are 15.9 million. The results, our examination does not provide a legal determination of the city's compliance with the specified requirements. In our opinion, management's assertion that the accompanying schedule for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2019 is accurate that the city's uses expenditures or Measure X funds complied with the requirements of Measure X is fairly stated in all material respects. And that concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, and I believe you have the report attached with uh, your, uh, uh, your items. Thank you. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Uh, anybody on the committee have any questions? I do. Hi, good evening. Um, have you have you done these types of procedures for other municipalities um, with regards to um, uh, their sales tax, uh, possible sales tax increases? Um, are we seeing more and more of this, or and are you, is this a similar type uh, proceed, uh, AUP that you're doing on other uh, for other municipalities? Yes, we have done this at other municipalities. There are different types of services that, that they will request, but this is the uh, management's assertion report. We have done that at other um, clients of ours. And uh, that is, this is a more recent development because it seems like all the cities are passing this. And so 
I think this year we've had to do a few where they just recently passed the tax. But each, each entity will, uh, it, it depends on, you know, how they uh, structure the engagement. What are the actual procedures that you're performing uh, since you're essentially just um, looking at the management's assertions of, uh, of where, the, especially, specifically more so on the expenditure side? Yeah, we look at the source documentation. And so uh, the information in there, uh, there's some components which included looking at the budget and that those numbers are actually shown in the budget. Uh, we also looked at uh, the compensation increases, so there are different components. So we looked at actual checks that were written. We actually looked at payroll registers, and then we established a time period. So we actually looked at all of those source documents to determine that the numbers were supported. Any other questions? I, I just had a, I just had a couple. So, when I read your notes here in revenue and ex, revenue use and expenditures, we've had a lot of discussion here about a structural deficit, and you reference an oper, uh, an operating deficit for fiscal year 2018, 2019 would have been 10.2 million. Now, when you do the next audit, will you compare that with the 2018, 2019 budget? And will you still probably identify but for Measure X, there still be a operating deficit? Or will Measure X just be tossed in as general fund revenue and function as revenue? Will it be, so when you analyze it, will it be separate? I think, I think each year is separate, but I believe that, I think the question you're asking is, will this always be a component of Measure X? I yeah. think that's the question you're asking. Yeah, yeah, because until the city council addresses that underlying 10.2 million yeah. deficit, it, it will always be there but for measure. Right, so, so without, we're not doing 1920, but I would right. say that that would be a fair statement to make. Okay. That that would be correct. Okay, thank you. I have a follow-up question, um, have you, have you have you begun to have discussions about how um, the fu the future uh, AUPs will be designed to be able to uh, provide useful information? Um, no, we we have, we have not had any of those discussions because again, these are management assertion, mm -hmm. and so I know that the 1920 information is in there. We have not had any discussions related to that. That's why I was a little careful in answering the question. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, try, I'm trying to trying to think about what would um, actually cause an inability to, to to say that management's assertions are not appropriate, and it's based upon the procedures that I imagine you, uh, that your your firm performed. And I'm struggling since essentially you're just taking the um, you know man, you're you're taking management's assertion, which you know we know that this is all general fund money, and you, you're not make, able to make a legal opinion about whether you know the procedures you're performing are um, meeting the uh, the requirement in the ordinance um, and, and I mean I've been in your spot before I'm also a CPA so I'm I'm trying to trying to imagine what um, you know w w in what instance you would be looking at you know looking at this and saying okay you know out of this 15 million we don't think that you know 10.2 is a an appropriate we, we, we don't agree with you know, management's assertion um, uh, of the use of this th this money, and I'm, I'm struggling to where, um, and I'm not going to expect you to, to to answer this because I'm not sure if there's a specific question in it. But I think that overall, that's what you know, kind of th this committee's struggle. I think with the you know the audit on the expenditure side, since this is all one bucket of money with general fund, and I think it's going to put continue to put our finance department in a very difficult. You know, this is the easiest year. To, to, re to really look at this, and it's going to get more and more difficult as we go forward. And I'm, you know, I'm just struggling to, uh, to to put the value on what this is actually, you know, telling us. Because essentially, you know, I can't imagine that there's really much instance to where you would say, no, I don't think that we agree with, you know, management's assertions about about this money because the money was spent. You know, five times the amount of this money was spent in the general fund. Um, so, 
if I may address that, <clears throat> one of the things um, we, we've, as staff, we've been talking about what that 1920 audit might look like and how it might go. So um, we have a public record. Let's just take an example for fiscal year 1920. We have a public record that says that we added um, either two or three, I can't remember now, but maintenance workers to the Colt team for homeless cleanup services. So that budget was adopted on June 18th. And so I would think that when we go through this with the auditors next year, that it would be incumbent upon us to first show them the public record that says that the city council intended this, and then two, show maintenance workers who work on the Colt team, who are coded to the Colt team, that were hired after June 18th, presumably after July 1st, and then show the actual compensation paid for them for the fiscal year. And so <clears throat> one of the things that we were discussing is, for example, um, let's just say that those those were, I'm just going to round down for ease, let's say it was two maintenance workers at $50,000 each. Well, maybe one of them gets hired on October 1st and one of them gets hired on November 1st, then we know that we're not going to spend $100,000, $50,000 each on those workers. And so we're going to be giving them our actual expenditures. We can identify these are the two people that were added to the Colt team, and then here's what the actual expenditures were for them. And so at, you know, I think in each case, we're going to have to try to uh, make the case you know, make the argument for the auditors to, to be able to demonstrate that we did follow what the city council intended for the uh, Measure X money. It's the best I can offer right now. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate that. And I think it's, um, you know, again, this is the, fir these first years are the easiest years to do. As, it, as we go along, it gets, uh, it gets more and more convoluted to where you're not able to look at it and say, well, what would have, you know, eight years ago, you know, we, we, we came into this major X funds and what, you know, what's happened since then. And, you know, this, it gets more and more convoluted. And I appreciate your point on the, you know, on identifying, you know, particular uh, 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 personnel and, and those types of items. Unfortunately, the, as you know, the biggest bucket of this is not really identified to, because it's, it's money that would have had to have been cut that you're not, now you're not having to cut that. And that's the and that's the most and that's the biggest part of this bucket, and it's also going to be the most difficult to be able to say, okay, well, you know, we, we saved you know these five workers from from Parks and Rec, and we saved a worker in finance. We said you know, you know, a, a, a person, and it's going to be you know, this is the easiest year, and it's still and very imprecise, um, you know, science behind this, and I'm just I continue to be concerned about. You know the 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 value that and, and you know again I've been in your spot and so I don't and uh, so the, you know what is the value of us uh, uh, of the work that's being done because essentially you're looking at and saying did this money get spent yes this amount of money got spent as well as five times this amount of money in the rest of the general fund of which is part of your you know overall city audit uh, um, so it's just yeah you know, it, it's just I think it puts your department. Catherine in a very difficult spot, uh, and but it also, you know, uh, shows that probably the, one of the most important parts of this whole process is probably what we're going to talk about later in terms of the, you know where, you know the report that you give to council um, is probably even more um, more important because then you're able to to you know. The, you know, White Nelson will be able to look at it and say, okay, well, this is what, you know, this is where they said the money was going to go. I would imagine you might, you know, you know, structure some procedures to where this is where they, you know, you know, said the money was going to go, um, and you know, is that did, did did that money go there or, you know, now they they tweak that and they, you know, it gives a little bit of a back back backbone to where you can go. But um, so, all right, no question, but thanks for the explanation. <laughs> Actually, now that we, now that you brought it up, I want to, want to ask you a question, not of the auditors, even though it does reference auditors. So it says <clears throat> there was a ten point two million dollar operating deficit, but we got additional. When did you did the it was the internet sales tax money banked 2018, 2019, and then there was additional property tax revenue, right? So even with those additional, I think it was like six million approximately, the deficit. So the deficit could have been. 
or am I, am I did the money come in later or am I missing things because we discussed the internet sales tax I don't remember when the ruling was I don't know if you banked that 2018 2019 or 2019 or the current budget and then property tax revenue does that come in mid fiscal year or does it come in at the beginning of the fiscal year because right we talked about the city got five million additional property tax revenue right and we got lucky and won the lawsuit and the internet sales tax money comes so is that so well even though they're saying 10.2 million the deficit would have been 16.2 but um, for measure x and these other two revenue streams well that that is one way to look at it i think yeah as as, as member johnson or vice chair or um Vice Chair Johnson has said it is very difficult to put your finger on it. Sure. The um, another way to look at it is, okay, that deficit would have actually been less because we got the additional revenue. Right. But then, because we got the additional revenue, council made additional appropriations. Right. So they. So I, yeah, I'm just trying to figure. Mm -hmm. As I put it together, mm -hmm. we had a good year this year revenue wise, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Council decided to spend it. You know, mm -hmm. and so the question is, I appreciate the auditor saying, based upon what the budget was, and based upon Measure X, the deficit, the operate your the operating deficit was 10.2 million dollars, mm -hmm. but four. Mm -hmm. But we got lucky, right? We got an additional six million dollars came out of this guy and it came into Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. We may not have that next year. Right. All right. So, I'm just trying to. We got lucky. A couple things. Maybe next year we lose a couple lawsuits, and then we got to write some checks. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of goes that way. So, mm -hmm. all right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any additional questions? I I have one more. And uh, sure. Catherine, what what what? Why is it the difference between the 15.8 versus 15.1? So expenditures exceeding revenue. Um, I mean, is there a plain language narrative that you can provide for that? It's just simply the expenditures so that we identified were more than the revenue that was brought in. Again, it's all one bucket in the general fund. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, I guess I could have identified expenditures up to the point of the revenue and then just stopped, uh, you know, because like what you and I talked about earlier, the, um, what is it, 183, 183,000 was paid out for vehicle incentive program rebates, and that wasn't included in the expenditures. So, I mean, do that's another question. Do, do I, you know, report out revenue or report out expenditures that were planned for that money until I get to the revenue point and then stop so that they equal? Or do I just keep going? You know, that's that's a good question. <laughs> we, we, we had talked on the the vehicle incentive program, and um, so I think that the annualized amount would be four hundred thousand and change for four fifty or so. Actually, one point seven million. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, the court, the the D annualized the, quarter, the quarterly yeah. mm -hmm. amount. Um, so is the one eighty three? Is that the, the actual uh, ex, uh, cash expenditure as opposed to the accrued the the accrued amount? Um, or, or is our vehicle, um, uh, pro is, or is it the sale of vehicles lower than we were maybe possibly expecting? So the, the 180, uh, approximately 180,000 is accrued. So we pay them after we receive the documentation. So is that post June 30th? But it's related to April through June period. So, so would it be a correct assumption to say that the the number of vehicles that were sold from the participating dealers were significantly lower? I mean more than half uh, than, yeah, that's probably. Not, than, than was maybe expected. And, and I'm not sure that that's quite a fair correlation to make <clears throat> because how we set that $1.7 million estimate was we, we took the average car price it, that is sold in Santa Ana and the, um, the uh, ad identified number of residents and multiplied and got the 1.7, or identified member of residents that bought cars in Santa Ana the previous year. And we multiplied and got the 1.7. But one thing that would ca cause the actuals to be less than that 1.7 is perhaps the Santa Ana residents aren't buying 
vehicles with an average price of $33,000 each. Maybe they're buying vehicles with an average price of $25,000 each. And when we made our estimate, we shot too high, taking the overall average. You see what I'm saying? So there's, you know, that was how we took our estimate, and it was the best that we could do at the time. But there, there are certainly multiple ways to how you could get to less without saying that it's just like, oh, no, the, the dealerships are selling way less cars than what we, they thought and thinking that now that's going to drive a, a greater problem somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, and it could also be seasonality, um, you know, in terms of our, more cars are generally sold in the fourth quarter than they are in the this be second quarter of the calendar year um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, um, I, I would say that I think um, – it would probably be more most appropriate in the future to be able to line item out the the, the vehicle incentive rebates that are, that, that are paid out um, because of, of any of the expenditures that the city incurs that's probably the one that we could point to as um, absolutely correlated mm -hmm. um, you know without without major X increase we would not have 100% we would definitely not have that that rebate so in the in the future uh, I would I would say that uh, you know obviously 180,000. Even though to most of us that's a, a material amount, but for the city that's not a material amount. I would imagine, um, but uh, uh, maybe in the future on this to be able to line item that out, um, especially because I think the residents probably would be you know they'd be interested to know how much we're rebating. And I think I'm done. Any further questions? Um, I suppose we can move on to partial recreation and community services. Okay. Use of Measure X revenue. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, Lisa Rudloff, Parks Recreation Community Services Agency Executive Director. And in the audience, we have Jeannie Gerardo. She is our Recreation and Community Services Manager. And uh, thank you for allowing me to be here this evening to talk about some of our Measure X funding uh, that we have, we currently have, and some of our future needs um, for Parks and Recreation. Um, parks and Recreation, I've been here 14 months and has had some challenges in the past, and a lot of funding has been um, removed from the, you know, recession and things of that nature and uh, the library department was um, incorporated into the recreation department uh, and so um, programs and services um, have been suffering and so um, just to give you a little perspective the parks and recreation uh, department we have 45 parks soon to be 47 uh, parks we have two senior centers <clears throat> we have eight community centers, we have one tennis center, uh, and we have operations of the Santa Ana Zoo. The library was uh, actually um, moved to be its own department, which is uh, a good thing. They're about to hire a director at the next council meeting next week. And so they'll be able to focus on those programs and, and services to uh, the community, uh, the library, and give it the attention that it needs. Um, so our Measure X funding, um, as you see up on the screen, uh, a little over $2 million is for um, improving really our contracts for landscaping, tree trimming, uh, custodial, ball diamonds, things of that nature. So the community will see um, a significant difference uh, in about February we're going to be hiring these contractors in our parks they're going to be mowed once a week they're going to be fertilized uh, the sprinklers are going to be fixed the garbage is going to be picked up um, these are just basic amenities and necessities I think that the community deserves so we're looking forward to that and that's what this money um, has helped us uh, is going to help us do also, we have a list of deferred maintenance repairs, and so uh, some of this money will also be used for that. Um, the 12 positions uh, for the park staff, I'm sorry, the 11 positions, actually it's 12, that's a mistake. Sorry, I had to hurry up and get this PowerPoint done. <laughs> but uh, we have 12 positions, um, which includes um, uh, park inspectors, general maintenance workers, um, a supervisor. So now we can have inspectors go out and um, inspect the contracts because they're paid for performance contracts. They can inspect the playgrounds because that's required and we're not doing that right now. Um, and um, we have general maintenance workers that can do in-house things and get things fixed uh, quicker. So we're very happy those folks are coming on board. We're just finishing the interview process and hopefully there will be 
actually starting after the first of the year. Also, we have $442,000 for, it says, tree replacement and supplies uh, and a little bit of the deferred maintenance. And we've removed quite a bit of trees. They haven't been trimmed in a really long time. They're dangerous. And so what we're doing is having assessments done of the health of the trees. If they need to be removed, we've removed them, and then we'll need to um, replace them also. Uh, the 700 and over $745,000 for the two full-time uh, positions at the zoo and um, uh, a significant number of part-time people in the Recreation and Community Services Division to um, uh, provide pro programs and services to the community, um, operate the community centers, things of that nature. Uh, the 343000 which is the zoo contracts, again, there were a lot of deferred maintenance items. There's increased supply for the food for the animals, and so this will help um, fund that appropriately. And, um, and then lastly, there was 194800 for two librarians. Can you, oh, there we go. Uh, the next slide is some of the future needs. Um, we have park security that deployed um, on September uh, 20th with Allied Universal um, Security. And so they patrol our park seven days a week. Um, they're an observe and report, and they just help augment the, the police department. Um, although this is not Measure X funded, um, we hope that this is con continues to be funded uh, to help us out in uh, monitoring our parks and facilities. There's a lot of um, geez, activity that goes on in the parks, <laughs> some not so good. Um, we've created a dashboard on the city's website if you want to check that out. Every month we'll report out what they've found and what has been reported. Um, as they go through the parks, they'll use the My Santa Ana app if they notice a maintenance item or um, uh, things that need to be fixed. Uh, so they'll add that to that. Um, so park security, that, that's about almost 700000 uh, a year. And there are uh, seven um, park patrol officers. One of those is a supervisor. Two are in the morning. We have them split the city. And then starting at 3 o'clock to midnight is the rest. And uh, they split up the city in fours. Is that, a, is that a contracted service or is that SEIU? Contracted service, yeah. Um, the next item is a parks master plan. Uh, the city of Santa Ana does not, we do not have a parks master plan, and this is really a comprehensive look at our entire system. And um, we really need to um, identify opportunities and engage the community to build, enhance, rehabilitate, maintain, and activate our parks. And so uh, this is a, a, a really extensive process that um, we need to um, hopefully start up next year. It takes about eight months to a year to complete. Um, at the last city council meeting, um, it was mentioned that um, a couple of the council members wanted a dog park. And so if we had a master plan, it would identify the dog parks and areas that might be uh, in the community that when money comes about or uh, there are grants, you have like this shovel ready or um, document that, that you can utilize to apply for grants. So. Um, so we're looking forward to hopefully starting that process uh, next year. Uh, and then the next one is park and facility uh, amenity replacements. Um, it's, it's everything in the parks that um, the community utilizes. The restrooms, I think, are the worst. We have 26 restrooms. About 19 of those need to be replaced. Uh, there is prostitution. There is drug dealing. There is some not good stuff going on in those restrooms. They need to be... Um, removed and replaced with, with better uh, facilities that will um, help the police monitor them in our park security. Um, also our playgrounds, um, some of the playground equipment needs to be replaced as well as the infill to make it safe for kids. So if they fall, it's, it's on the resilient surfacing or some type of, um, I think we have a lot of sand in our playgrounds, but those need to be updated. We need picnic tables, benches, drinking fountains, bleachers, backstop, outdoor exercise equipment, synthetic uh, sports fields, shade structures, safe walkways. There's a lot of walkways that are buckled, uh, even at the senior centers, and um, people are tripping, and, and you know, those are... Um, 
lawsuits. <laughs> and so we need to get those fixed, um, as well as our parking lots uh, and our sports and security lighting. And um, something we've done this year is we've turned on our security lighting that we have operating at all the parks. So it makes it a little more um, safer, and the neighborhood um, appreciates that. So, um, but some of it's a little shoddy. It needs to be replaced and upgraded. And then the staffing to accommodate our increased programs and services eventually. We have to have staff to man the um, community centers, the programs uh, and services. And uh, Jeannie and her staff do a great job. They're, they're minimal. We use a lot of part-time folks. We use volunteers. Um, but at some point, we need to have full-time staff uh, operating our facilities to, to make it safe. Real quick question. So the uh, yes. zoo staff and part-time recreation staff does not cover that? That's that's just partial. That that doesn't cover it all. That's just. Um, um, so you need additional staffing. Additional, additional staffing, yeah, full time staffing. Uh, something the human resources department um, wants us to make sure that we have full time staff. Uh, for example, operating a community center. Um, so the part time folks there have a supervisor to supervise them because they're there by themselves, and so that's what we're trying to accomplish. Question, uh, quick, sorry, quick question on your park security. You said they're just observe and report. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So then that puts a burden back onto the police department. Uh, yes. If they cannot handle something, um, then they call the police department and they come out and and they help them. Uh, they don't have any kind of um, weapons or pepper spray or anything like that. They get out of their cars. They will walk the park um, and try to you know entice people, loiters to to get out of the park. Um, but sometimes um, the gig is up. They know the security is there and that when they leave, they'll just come back to the park. So um, it's just an extra set of eyes uh, on the park. But, um, yeah, they can't arrest anybody. Okay, that's my next <laughs> no, no part of arrest either. Though. No, okay. no. And, and I th the police department was trying to hire um, park rangers. And so they were having difficulty in doing that. So this is kind of the, uh, in the meantime, get some uh, park security, park patrol out there to would, help out. So Would the park ranger be considered a peace officer then? Yes, they would have. So they would fall under the yes. offices of the police department, which yes. increases their budget even more? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and that's all I have, um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. I, have, I actually have several. Mm -hmm. So my first question is, what was this? What was the park budget before the Great Recession? The, and the reason I ask, I'll, I'll put it into context for you. Right. Massive cutbacks in every department. Yes. Except for possibly law enforcement. Law enforcement was here two meetings ago. Said we don't really know what we need to be fully staffed, and what 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 our budget is, which kind of flabbergasted me. Kind of like you don't know. What response times will be if you're fully funded and you have and you're fully staffed? Right. So we've just gone through the longest economic boom in a long time. Yeah. And for them to starve the parks and recs department mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, what's even worse about that is that, if I understand it correctly, we live off of grants for the park. Yes. You, you guys live off of grants, which is which is no different, unfortunately, than public works. Yeah. It, it is a pattern. It's been. It's a pattern with how the city functions, which is which. I think many of you came from other cities. They don't function that way. It's sad, and so what I'm trying to get at is, what was your budget pre Great Recession? Because we got to get you back to that level first. Right. Then we can add additional money to the Parks and Recs. Right. Because <clears throat> we are talking about quality of life for the residents of Santa Ana. That that's what we're talking about, and. The citizens up here were put here to do that, to try to help that, mm -hmm. not watch it get spent on things that outside of fixing the structural deficit. Right. That's my first question. So when you get a chance, get us the full budget. Sure. So when we make our recommendations to council, it's like, well, the pre-Great Recession budget was X. You've gutted it, lived yeah. off of other people's grants, and never really went back to, we're, we're 10 years, well, I'd say eight years from the Great Recession. Right. What did you put in extra? What they did was, what it appears that they starved Parks and Recs and starved Public Works and said, go get your own money. Well, then what's the purpose? The second question I had is, which is actually, it's more complicated, but I, 
I, th I think it when you do the master plan, it's something we need to figure out. Yep. I've been in this city 25 years. Some of the folks on here longer than me. The school district, their playgrounds and their fields are part of the are tech, not part of the Parks and Recs department, but you guys use we use them like Parks and Recs, and so we have to figure out a relate a good relationship between the school district and the city council to figure out how we can ma you guys try to maximize the best you can. Mm -hmm. You walk into warfare between soccer clubs and soccer leagues all the time. But that's how this city functions because we don't have enough space. I get that. So we have to figure out, okay, if they give you access to a field, <laughs> what is the city's piece? We can't expect the school district to pay for everything. Just like right. when the city says you can use our fields, well, by the way, you got to put like when you want to use Eddie West Field, that's a city field. Right. How much does modern day or somebody else pay? So we have to figure that out because to me, in many of these neighborhoods, the only thing that exists is the school. And how we do that is essential. And we would like to, or at least I would on this, figure out how we can set aside money or start to direct money to solve that bigger problem. Because then you're, you say you're adding two parks, 47. If we add every school, what are we at? Mm -hmm. The parks, one we add a, a maybe another twenty five parks basically, but we take care of them, and that's that's what I'm trying to figure out. So whatever where you're at with school district would help yeah. because soccer leagues just move around, right? Little league fields we got a few, you know, and so I'm trying to figure out when I look at parks and recs, just like we did with public works, just like we did with public safety, what is your budget? Well, I need to know pre-recession because that's normally we get to start first parks and recs. We need to know what you what you get in in grants that make up your budget, and then if you were to have an optimal budget, what would that be? Because the voters, as Tim likes to say, city won the lottery, and now we have to budget appropriately for big buckets. Public safety is one, public works is two, right. parks and recs is three. We have to figure that out and. We're one of the few voices that get to tell the city council, hey, maybe you should spend it this way instead of that way. So that those are my two big questions. Pre-recession budget mm -hmm. and Santa Unified School District, I believe we have access to all the most of the schools, right? You have access yeah, to we have, the Yeah, we have a joint use agreement. And right, and how much do <laughs> they put up? I mean, mm -hmm. and we put up, but it goes both ways. We have city parks that they have some of their school stuff on. Right, right. For example, like Roosevelt Walker Community Center, there are three rooms that the school utilizes for their for school, and right. then they use our parking lot, you know, and then... Right, and so, so, when, and so when I see parking lots up there, it's like, wait a second, well, the parking lot half the time is used by the school district. Well, you're asking for a bond measure to pass, so that's, in an urban area, we gotta to function together in some shape or fashion. Mm -hmm. So th those are two my two big things. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any plan to buy additional land? Because I know we have a deficit on parks, I mean, land-wise. Um, not that I'm aware of right now. <laughs> uh, why? <laughs> If we can find some, when we do our parks master plan, it's going to identify opportunities, and so those will be some of the results of that. Um, so it's it's really going to comprehensively look at the entire city, uh, and um, you know give us some type of roadmap or plan that we can look to and have data actually available <laughs> um, to talk about our programs and facilities, our parks and amenities, and they actually um, rate all of our amenities in our parks. Um, you know, make sure we um, figure out how, how many acres are really ours, how much is the school districts, and, mm -hmm. and you know, how do we utilize uh, those properties, so. Yeah. Like Centennial Park. Right. Where it's all divvied up and right. federal land, state land, county land. Yes, yeah. correct. Lisa, Lisa, I have a question, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I was told a little while ago that those green belts that are along Bristol mm -hmm. are considered parks by the city. Is that true? I don't know, but I w I'd like to. Jeannie Gerardo is nodding her head no, but can you? Okay. <laughs> Just green space. Yeah. I don't... I'm not. Hello? Hello? Hi, I'm nodding my head no because 
as far as I've been here since 1994, I know there there has been talk. I don't know how long ago, but no one has directed us to use use it as a park. In my personal opinion, that would be not adequate. Could you imagine a ball going on Bristol Street? And those are my thoughts. Yeah. But no one has directed us to use it as a park. Yeah. Are you talking about the green areas on the sides? Yes. Yeah, yeah, those. I mean, I would consider it more of like a, a pocket park. Park. the power lines and that kind of thing. You know, it's not, not a park, it's a bike trail, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Not, not a park. Right, they can be linear, walking, biking. Oh. Sorry. Walking park, linear park, the yes. green space, and <laughs> Yeah, a lot, of, park. a lot of cities refer to that as just simply open space. So yeah. sometimes they even yeah. refer to it as parks and open space. Oh, not surprising I have a few questions <laughs> um, a couple of other just you know factual type things but um, so on the your the two million dollars of parks and maintenance and repairs um, and you had indicated that those are for uh, you know you'll have some people coming in um, mid-year February and and so is this two million dollars is this a is that an annual need or uh, or is this or is that a deannualized Amount so meaning that it really to keep what keep up with what we need it next year next fiscal year it's actually going to be you know three million four million dollars it's it's you're, that's a great question we went out with an RFP and uh, it is two million dollars more we can make it through this year but we're going to need two million dollars more just to have an adequate um, uh, care of our parks and facilities to honor those contracts for for the current fiscal year the. No. So the, the, current, the 1920 the 1920 year? we have enough money in our parks and recreation to award the contracts in February uh, and work through the end of the fiscal year so four months yes but starting the new fiscal year we're going to need you know two million dollars um, for those contracts but that, I mean that math I'm confused on the math because so if we need two million dollars <coughs> to go from February to June um, now, I'm sorry. There, maybe there's some catch up and you know, uh, deferred. Uh, I'm sorry. Time. The contract is two million more than we expected for the entire year. Okay. So, so, it's, so it's two million for the fiscal year. Correct. Yes. And sorry about that. And would you expect that to be two million for the twenty uh, the twenty twenty one fiscal year also, or would it be four million? Or? I'm sorry. Twenty twenty one would be the two million extra thousand. Okay. We need. Two million dollars, yeah, not that. <laughs> um, but um, before, from uh, like February or March through June, we have enough funding within our budget um, to cover the cost of the contract. Okay, so Catherine, does that change anything in terms of because this your four point seven million on, on this prior slide? Um, mm -hmm. You know, out, outside of the three hundred forty three thousand zoo contracts, I think ties into. Um, Catherine's uh, <coughs> 1920 mm -hmm. um, expe expected expenditures, but I'm I'm hearing you say that the two million here is not really needed for our current fiscal year that we're in right now. That it, that's an ongoing future item, or maybe I'm misinterpreting um, what you're saying. The two million that was awarded is being utilized by our current contract, uh, and we're utilizing that for deferred maintenance repairs and things of that nature so we are utilizing that money in our current fiscal in our current year. fiscal year okay. yes so I, I just want to make sure that i understand so the the two million that was added to your budget using measure x money for park maintenance and in 2021 you really need four million or is correct. it uh, correct okay that's correct. that's, that's Sorry. what i want that's to get correct to. okay so yeah. so it, it is a higher and uh, the ongoing amount yes. is, is going to be much, much higher okay yes and it just to, to, one of the things that we had talked with uh, um, uh, director downs on was you know kind of identifying ongoing versus ongoing needs versus uh, you know kind of one-time spend uh, so for example tree replacements i think is in our one-time spend right uh, column versus this two million now four million or whatever the number would be you know bigger than two million number right. to keep our parks fertilized mode and all yes. that type of stuff that we would all expect our parks to be um so that is, yeah okay um on the the tree on the trees um so that, that's a one-time one-time spend um obviously i think we could probably all agree that you know 
that doesn't make our, our city um, as many trees as we probably would like to have. And you know, we are an aging city that you know trees have a life life cycle also. Um, have you identified what the ongoing need would be for uh, for a tree replacement program as opposed to just a, a you know the you know I'm assuming that this 442 where you know specifically identified trees and, and those right. types of things right uh, we, we don't have an assessment of our tree so what mm -hmm. we're trying to do is have an assessment uh, and uh, we just increased our uh, contract with West Coast Arborist for 250,000 we used to only have 50,000 for trees now we added 250000 to that. And so now we have an appropriate amount of money to go out there and assess trees, fix trees. But um, we'd like for them to tell us um, what we need to, to do, kind of like a plan for our trees. And <clears throat> so I don't have that uh, information yet. Okay. Um, just, a, a, just a comment on this, not necessarily a finance uh, type item, but um, you know, I think a lot of my neighbors, they, anytime they see a tree getting cut down by a city, uh, worker or any type, they think that oh, they're killing a perfectly healthy tree. Yeah. Whereas I imagine that that is probably you know it's being cut down for a reason, either safety or it's disease that's about ready to fall, and you don't want it to you know fall on someone's head. Right. Um, so I you know from a you know I believe that we have a, a problem in our city of not communicating some of the things that our city is doing that are well intentioned, mm -hmm. um, but it's not the message is not necessarily getting out to the public in terms of why we're doing certain things. I think that's one of those things that. Especially now, I think that we have a public information officer that you know might be one of those things that you might want to put on your list um, to be able to communicate to the uh, community about you know what the plan is for trees and why sometimes they're being taken down, especially when they're in parks. Absolutely, um, I absolutely agree. Um, the um, the the community should be notified ahead of time, and then we should be posting signs at the site, of, you know, at least a week ahead of time, and so. Um, I, I, I have a, a few uh, remaining uh, questions also. Mm -hmm. um, so the park security program, which you and I have spoken to, have spoken on before, and um, you know, I'm overall supportive of it. But it was supposed to be a, um, a temporary type type uh, uh, program to kind of gap fill right. um, in ter uh, um, until the time that the park uh, park ranger program can be established or. Uh, maybe another security company that you know you go through a full RFP type process instead of using um, our, our existing security program. Mm -hmm. where, where, where is the city at with RFP and maybe even the PD with the parks ranger, especially with the hiring success that they've been having? Mm -hmm. uh, the I'll start with the RFP. Um, we're going to be waiting until June to do the RFP, so we're going to give this security oh, yeah. company some time to um, work out the kinks, and then we'll go out with an RFP. Um, but I'm not sure where the uh, police department is with hiring of park rangers. I would have to get back to you on that. Would, would that fall under um, under Parks and Rec, or would that be a, a, a PD type issue, or is that it's one of those things like, hey, we're not quite sure yet? We're not quite sure yet. Okay. Pa um, park rangers are under the police department. Uh, I've been other uh, in other agencies that they're in Parks and Rec or the police department. It just depends on um, the pleasure of that city. Okay. Um, and then I, I believe that we, uh, the city has also uh, implemented some cameras, I think, at certain yeah. uh, certain locations, uh, which I think are in parks, Yes, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, could you give a, a quick comment in terms of, is that working well? Is it something the city likes? Or is it something your department wants to expand that program? Right. There are some security cameras that are um, uh, installed at parks, for example, at, at Madison Park. The security cameras um, are vandalized, mm. they're spray painted, they're broken, um, um, they're not monitored. Uh, so someone's not sitting there watching the camera uh, when crimes happen and things happen. So they can go back to the tape, obviously. The police department um, is able to do that. But for the amount of money that we've been spending on these cameras, I just think that they are not working. About how much are we spending? Uh, like I would say park? it's like a hundred thousand per park from what they put in. And we have like five parks or so. Uh, there's a there's about to be six parks, okay. and so um, like at, at Madison, I can I I'm sure it can touch the camera mm -hmm. on the side. You know, so then they can just pop those out. And so I don't know if that's the solution or if it's it's really helping much. Uh, they also have those code blue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, cameras and they're putting those in I think those are very helpful um, in case somebody needs something and they can at least get to that and 
and call for help. But um, I would probably rather put my money um, into something else, like a, a park ranger or the security services. Okay, fair. Good. Um, how many, I mean, you know, we have your needs here. I mean, what do you need, what, dollar amount, what do you need to run the parks program, parks and rec, the way that you would want it, want it to be? Or it may, it may, maybe in terms of incremental would be our, probably our best our best gauge here? Right, right. We are um, in the process of doing an evaluation of the entire department, our programs and services, not the Parks Master Plan, uh, but um, Jeannie was just involved today. We've been doing this for about six months now. So it really looks at um, our pricing, our cost recovery, our programs, what are we offering, what's the community offering, are we duplicating? Um, so on the recreation side of the house, we're waiting for that to happen. Um, on the park side of the, so before I can give a number on that, okay. um, on the park side of the house, I'm very happy because we're getting the staff to make our parks um, better, and it's just the basic amenities and necessities is what we're looking for um, on the park side. So um, we're doing a lot of RFPs right now, and like now I need two more million for the landscaping contracts. So I can't give you a number right now, but but we're in the process of identifying how much we really need. Uh, for that, but I can certainly get back to you with that for sure. Okay. And, and a follow up on that, um, um, th that was that was actually the answer I was hoping you weren't going to give me. But um, oh, <laughs> because I was hoping you'd give me a number because then because then uh, then you would identify that and, and hopefully it, it has spoken to the city manager on it. And yeah. So w one of my concerns is that we are in a um, that, that financially sometimes it feels like to the public, um, and you know we know that everything is happening. There's a lot of stuff. You know we have great great, great uh, city employees that are working hard and do, doing everything they can. But it seems like, I think, from the public side that it's the first person to the table asking for money <laughs> is the one that, you know, the first to the table is the one that's getting fed. And um, to where, I mean, we see, um, you know, the, the police officers, which I think we all are appreciative of the police officers, but we also want great parks. And, right. And so we hear about, you know, you know, the police officers coming to the table and saying we need X, Y, Z, um, but we're not hearing from you know from from Parks and Rec or in, in, in the same type of thing last last uh, meeting with with the uh, uh, Public Works that hey we you know we, he, here's the inventory of everything of all the departments needs mm -hmm. and now the council and the residents are able to say well what are our priorities right. in that and it's really hard to do. I think when we don't have that that big picture, um, and, and to where then it looks like, and maybe it's and, and hopefully it's not that way, but it looks like the first of the table is the one that's getting fed. Right. The most organized department is the one that's getting you know getting getting fed in that process, right. and to where I personally want to have you know top notch open space and parks and the the recreation staff to be able to go uh, do that. We're the, one of the youngest cities in the country as you know and we should have you know top-notch um, uh, parks for for everyone to to be in um, so I, I would encourage you to to to, to put the gas pedal on on, right. on that and and advocate for your department to be able to to where you are also in that spot to where you're saying hey this is what the, our needs are and right. the community you guys need to be you know speaking into what is you know the priority uh, you know what this council members know what the priority is so they can make you know good decisions for all of us too absolutely um just to uh before the city man well actually right when the city manager came on i, I sat with um uh, Catherine and the city manager and made a presentation uh, about our needs for the department that's how we got all this <laughs> and so um i understand what you're saying but that really didn't get out to the community, yeah. so um, understood and and, yeah, and that's where I'm saying I know that there's a lot of uh, yeah. you know stuff that's happening that we don't aren't aware of, and a yeah. lot of it you know sometimes we don't need to be aware of it, um, but uh, it, it's the perception I think out there that is uh, you know everyone's perception is their own reality, and when we're seeing you know consistently that you know the police officers are being taken care of, which they should be, yeah. but we also need to be taking care of other um, other departments also. Absolutely agreed. And that's that's it for me. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Alrighty. Oh, I'm sorry. The bags that I gave you are um, 
our park ambassadors that drive around in vehicles. Uh, they go and check on permitted activities, and so they're going to be filling these with information. I ordered 2,000 of them, giving them to the community, because I want to see these bags all over the community. Uh, Parks Make Life Better is a uh, branding campaign with our professional association, Parks and Recreation, that the entire state of California is um, getting behind. So on a, we're on the bandwagon, uh, and inside there you have our new activity guide that just came out. So um, uh, please... Uh, Use these when you go grocery shopping. <laughs> Thank you. I believe, Catherine, it's your turn. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so just as a follow-on to that, um, we'll, we'll follow up by email as we've had in the past um, with feeding you additional information based on your questions tonight. We'll go back and uh, take a look at a few things. So you are at the point in your agenda. Um, when we talked last at your last meeting, you expressed a desire to prepare some kind of initial report to the city council. And then you would have some kind of report going to them in March um, with your budget recommendations. And so the, um, this agenda item is, is on your agenda to give you the opportunity to discuss and maybe prepare the structure of what that initial report might look like. Um, so the report that we prepared that, that has the pies in it and the information and the summary tables, I, you know, because we prepared it in, and it's our assertion of what those numbers are and that information, I think of that as the staff report that you can use as your basis for your report, plus all of these meetings and the information that you've, that you've uh, gathered. And then we have the auditor's report on our report, basically saying that w the numbers that we are in there are fairly stated. So... I, I would uh, <clears throat> defer to the committee as to how you want to proceed with preparing the initial report that you discussed during your last meeting. And as a reminder, we talked about a couple different methods that you could use. We can put something up on the screen. You can craft comments. I can type them up there. Um, you can develop a, you know, appoint a subcommittee to go back and draft something and bring it back to the committee. So um, it's really up to you guys what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Keith had some initial comments and statements about what you gave us. I think it's a good starting mm -hmm. piece. Um, I was alarmed. I was at a um, Chamber of Commerce gathering, and the city manager was talking about the budget, and the police department, well, not the police department, the police union specifically asked if the budget was in the black. And the city manager, rightfully so, said that well, we're technically in the black, a certain amount of millions of dollars. I take that as what Tim was just talking about. They are looking to see how much money extra is that they can take. I raised my hand and I said, wait a second. City manager, isn't there a structural deficit but for Measure X? And she said, there's not a structural deficit. And I said, no, there is a structural deficit. And that's what we've got here. And what I'd like to make, at least my, my view of this initial report to the, to the city is, there is still a structural deficit. But for Measure X, you still have to fix, there are some things that have to be fixed. We've heard Parks and Recs, they've lived off of grants. We've heard Public Works, they live off of grants. Well, if you're going to fully fund those departments with regular revenue, you still have to fix the whole. You have to figure out how to fix the whole. And when you put in there, rightfully so, you put in that there was a... I can't remember where I was reading. Was it whether whether it was one point seven or two point five million dollars of easy deficit reduction efforts that they did not take? And so I'd like to use this document as like, hey, it's going to come. But remember, we at the at the tax committee believe that there's still a structural deficit that needs to be addressed. And I don't know how you do that. You know, she talked about security guards. Parks and Rec talked about security guards. I remember back when the city looked at CCTV as a possibility. Cheaper. To have people sit in a room, monitor screens like they do in Europe and elsewhere. And the mayor was, and we, I think we tried it for a period of time. I'm just saying that we need, I think that our voice needs to be, we need to address, and need, need, and I think we need to give you guys the tools. You and the city manager to say, look guys, 
and gals, we're overspending. And we need you to address the structural deficit so we can fulfill our needs as the Citizens Oversight Committee to say parks got X, public works got Y, and it's general revenue. It's not just grants and other things. So when I read this, I'm like, okay, I'd like to overemphasize the structural deficit. So it gives staff the tools to go in there. Obviously, the city council makes the final decisions, but if, if fellow residents are saying fix the structural deficit, staff has made recommendations, hey, we can trim here, we can change this, and the council still overrides it, well, then they have to answer to the voters. But I, I, I think we would be doing the public a disservice if we not, didn't say there's a structural deficit, Measure X fixed it for now, but we still have to address the problem. Because at the same meeting I was at, city manager said the budget starts to go like this. Pension costs and everything. So at some point, we have to address it. So I, I don't want to be the ones to say, oh, yeah, everything's hunky dory. I want to say, hey, it's still a structural deficit. got to address it. Whoever it is, current council or future council, have to address it. There's actually um, three points there that I think are important to note. So there's an existing structural buff, uh, budget deficit, like we talked about, the $10.2 million. Yeah. Then on top of that, there is a service deficit, which has not been quantified. So you heard Lisa say that she needs more money. You heard William say he needs more money for streets. You've even heard the police say we need yes. more police officers. So we have the identified structural deficit. We have a service deficit. And then the third thing is the concept of we only have 10 years of this revenue at this level, then it drops down, then we only have it for another 10 years after that. So there's actually three components to what you might refer to as a deficit. Yeah, and, and so for me, I think about when she talked about we have a bunch of deferred maintenance. Well, those are one-time costs. Those are easy things to do, right? i got to fix this. We can all, and not only us, but staff and the city council can point, we fixed the bathrooms in the parks. That's what Measure X money went to. And you figure out how you guys do it, but I think that we, we would do a service to everybody if we identified the deficit, however you want to identify it. There is a structural, there is a service deficit. And the residents, I think, loud and clear know there's a service deficit. When we sat through response times with police, there's a service. When someone says my car got robbed, please do not get there. They, basically, you take care of it yourself. So however we want to do it, but I think the emphasis on there's a deficit and the voters helped you out, but we only gave you 10 years to fix the thing. And who knows if they're going to renew it. So to me, how we use that preamble or the background or however you want to use it, I think to me is essential to getting the message across. Because... As long as I'm here, I'm happy to keep saying there's a structural deficit until it gets fixed. Because at some point, they have to, we, have, we have to address it. And we might as well do it over a five-year period than one-year shock and awe and cut everything, which is a concern. So, and then the other, the other side of that, too, is um, you know, there's certainly uh, the thought that you don't cut your serve, you don't cut the budget in other ways or whatever. You find ways to enhance revenue. To, to get up to what it is that you need. So there's actually two sides to the coin. If you think about it, technology alone has not been adapted even at the planning counters. I mean, let's do basic stuff, block and tackle stuff the cities do all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we have good technology. We At least I know the infrastructure is good. So buy the software. I'm sorry. We have to have discussions about this. Yeah. You can be retrained for another job. But... Simple things that other cities do, we don't do. When you listen to what she has to say about the parks, we don't do the simple things. We don't do the block and tackle. We do get some grants and a dog park. Are you kidding me? We don't have basic parks. People can't walk the parks at night, and you want to spend money on a dog park. So to me, I think it behooves us as oversight to say, look, do the basic things. Fix the structural deficit. Look at service over a five-year period, and then there's five years in the out years. Then you can you have money to play with. You can figure out what you want to do. I mean, if you if you say the deficit is ten million, that's two million dollars a year in five years, while you're maintaining service levels or enhancing some, right? 
So that, to me, that's what this report could reflect. Because there's some people that have grown up in the city and things have not gotten better for them. It's gotten worse. And that's sad. It's really sad. So to me, you know, my kids are almost grown, almost, in, almost out of high school, but this money can really turn the city in the right direction with the right people and the right voices to say, guys, let's fix it. Fix the simple stuff. When, you, when there's no app for the planning counter, that drives me nuts. When people have to come down here and sit here half a day to get permits for their house, you're kidding me. In Anaheim, I go, and I can get my permit. I submit my, you know, you, that's, you guys have worked in cities. You know what that's like. It's, and that, to me, are those, are those are the things that we can invest in. Some of it's one-time spending and then simple maintenance. So I think the background document, at least from my viewpoint, and this document can reflect there's a structural deficit. We want you to tackle it. Do what you're elected to do, basically. So that's my, that's what I think this document can be used for, the initial document. Uh, I fully agree. I, I think it's a great idea. I think one of the things that I think when we first sat down at this table, everybody was shocked to realize that most of the money was going to pay off debt and that I think it was a little bit deceptive on the part of how this was presented to the populace and they're not getting what they paid for. Quite simply, I'm, I'm in full agreement. I mean, there's, you know, all those wonderful things that were supposed to happen and they're not going to. And I, I fully agree that this is the time to put the light on it and um, show people what's really going on. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with anything that anyone said so far. Um, going back to our logistics on, on this, this is your document though, right, Catherine? The one that is before us, this is your, because you, you have Correct. a requirement to report on historical, so in this case, mm -hmm. um, the fourth quarter of our of our fiscal year, mm -hmm. April to June. So this this is your report that you're planning to send to uh, send to, to council. Right. Is that right? Right. And um, it can go at the same time as your report, so that they have the full picture. This is this is what staff provided us, and this is our report to the council. Okay. Um, now it, I believe that our report is, is supposed to be presented in March, which it was it was to be a um, uh, at least I envisioned it more as a uh, maybe not this first year, but you know, on an annual basis, speaking into the budget mm -hmm. uh, for the upcoming that's right uh, year. Although I don't think that we have any necessary guide guidelines, other than I think it does say that we're you know it can be used in the budgeting process. So I mean, that's the intent is that that those comments from this committee would be you know hopefully absorbed by council and, and considered by council and by staff because obviously staff puts the budget together and then council I suppose responds to it and ultimately votes on it. Um, so, you know, the, the, these types of items of, of uh, um, you know, priorities, I think, are of utmost importance. But this, the document before us, this is your document, of which obviously, you know, we can speak into, but uh, this is y y your document. And the only, the only thing that I would, you know, uh, you know add to which I talked to you on would be the, you know, the, uh, the, the car rebate mm -hmm. uh, thing, because, again, that's the most direct item mm -hmm. related to Major X. In the you know, first year, you get it in there, and now it's just you know it's going to be recurring um, in there. Um, you know, in terms of this this group, you know, I mean, right or wrong, I mean, I think we've all got we all have expressed our frustration with oh my goodness, like like does everyone know how bad it really was? Um, and but we're you know we can't do anything about that, but we can you know make sure that people know what's going on, which I think is what you know citizens committee oversight committees are for, but. <clears throat> really this you know that the use of this one-time money is what I think we have our biggest you know impact as as this group w would be um, of which we have two different you know we have a overall um, general fund uh, one-time use of uh, one-time expenditure for their current fiscal year 6.6 .6 million and then in terms of I like, kind of more identified X funds would be 5.2 um, if, if I'm if I'm interpreting what, what I have in front of me uh, from Catherine, um, you know, and so really identifying that you know, hey guys, this is, you know, if you keep everything status quo, you know, and then you take away that one time money, this is the money that we, you know, that the is you know, you can decide to do yeah. different things with, you know, parks and rec with. And that, and I think you know your point on well, how much in the black are we? You know, and that's 100%. That's what I feel is like, 
okay, well, there's a reason why the police union didn't renegotiate their contract when it, it expired, because they wanted the you know for that money to come on board, and the same you know the, they are highly uh, uh, if, uh, strategic in, in what they're doing, which they should be. I want all of our departments to be that way, though, uh, and then so that way we can make a the council can make a good decision over all of this. So that's why I think it's so. I'm glad that we're doing these departmental type meetings so we can get a grasp on what each of these areas need, um, but. I mean, w would you agree that the, the I mean, the one time the one time money, Catherine, you know, whether it's five point two or six point six, would be, I mean, that that's money that the city, assuming that revenue stay exactly the same and all the exp other expenditures stay the same, that, that the council would need and staff would need to be coming up with a use for that that money, or it goes into reserves. Would that be that, correct that's correct? Assumption? And on September seventeenth, the city council appropriated four million of it. Two million for uh, roadway maintenance, one million to uh, set aside for youth services, and one million for the quality of life team. But that that was that was appropriated from last year, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so, and, and I'm sorry. The be, um, which the, which five point? What are you? Uh, so I'm on page three of your report, page twenty one of twenty three of the packet. Okay. Okay. Which oh, I, I see. The, the one, the the one time money. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So, so I'm referring to the 6.6 .6 million gotcha. uh, one okay. time column. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Uh, or, you know, alternatively, the 5.2 on mm -hmm. the next page of mm -hmm. one time, you know, 1920 X expenditures. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Right. So I mean, th this would be, you know, in a normal normal course, would be if everything else stayed the same and we didn't have, you know, the. the, the Council and staff, well, staff, and then approved by council would need to find a use for this, whether that be you know put it in general fund reserve or right. you know other priorities. Right, that is correct. Um, one of the things that I would encourage you to do tonight is to decide um, you know what your format is going to be, and then um, you know fill it with your content. So, for example, last meeting you spoke of really two pieces: one, a preliminary piece going to city council that says we're concerned about X, Y, and Z, and then the second would be your budget recommendations that would go to the city council in March in time for the budget process. So, you know, when I when I hear uh, some of the comments that have been made, I it it sounds like those are the concerns that you have that would go in that preliminary piece to council if that is the way you still want to proceed. So that preliminary piece to council, do you want it to be in the form of a letter from the committee, or it, it, I mean, can? Can you um, give me a little bit more insight as to where you might be leaning for that? My personal opinion is a letter. I don't think we need to go overboard, but I think a letter that gets the point across. Okay. Um, that's just my opinion. My, my concern on a letter is, um, which I, I think we should do a letter. I don't know if that's the end of the mm -hmm. end of the story, uh, because I'm afraid that a letter is just going to be uh, received and filed, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I, I you know, it, it, hopefully they all read it. But I feel like sometimes they, yeah. you know, someone in front of them is mm -hmm. is is going to be, uh, and I still think we should do the letter no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, someone, you know, in front to be able to, to speak into it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, it's not on a consent calendar. It's an actual item, um, and you know, who knows? Maybe even uh, the the public might be interested in 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 hearing it. As well as maybe even speaking into some of the items, um, if they have an opportunity to look at it. So, th that that would be my suggestion: is that we do a, a letter, as well as then a um, a, 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 a presentation of, of, of expressing orally what some of those concerns are. I okay. agree with you. That sounds like something that we. I I would personally feel like that's the best way to go. Okay. Just because, like how you said, I think the letter would probably just get it seen and maybe just like like mm -hmm. skim through it and then be like, all right, okay, next. So, I think that the I think that's the right way to go. I think a PowerPoint, like we've got a bunch of numbers here in the first three paragraphs you gave us of the background. It's easy to highlight budget shortfall, structural deficit. Those slides tend to sit with people. And 
that gets the point across because the letter you're right people just read the letters verbose and thanks a lot put up two or three slides that basically say structural deficit thank you voters we have to thank the voters somehow we i feel we need to thank the voters council may not want to thank the voters but the voters without the voters we'd be cutting a lot <laughs> we'd be cutting a lot and so i think that and then how we how we express that structural deficit what you what you identified in multiple parts how we tell them look it's coming in march we're going to tell you we would like parts of the structural deficit fixed we'd like to see a glide path path to fixing it and to me that's kind of i think how we do it. but i do it like a, I, I do a powerpoint mm -hmm. the letter and then easy to line it out because you've you've described it to us very easily budget was here structural deficit council had a chance well it was like the first day we were here mm -hmm. they didn't cut 1.2 or whatever it was and the voters fixed it so i think that that's something that we can use multiple times because when we come back next year right parks and rec's got this you guys will be able to do that and explain it to them so yeah i'm in full agreement letter and i think a two three page powerpoint's all we really need to do well, i mean you, you've sat you've sat in front of the, those committees before so i, I, I highly respect your mm -hmm. your opinion on that and especially because you're able to absorb what's in front of you and what's going to be most impactful well, and um, and the voters are visual learners most people are visual learners now yeah so a powerpoint with simple things on it we don't clutter it up and we do it because the letters are cluttered i mean i sit and read comment letters to the to C cms and 20 pages and it, my eyes glaze over but powerpoints or charts they work the best and i think the council members will get it let's simplify it for them too because because i think how we explain it to them and how because you you explain it very easily to us it can easily be put in a powerpoint right city budgets here hole was here revenue measure x filled it however this hole still remains but but for measure x that kind of stuff and then i think the other thing that i would like to express is that i would front load this tax with one-time funds i think that that decision that i understand why they made the police decision but if you fix the bathrooms if you replace the trees if you pave the roads right you buy 10 years you buy 20 years I can't even remember the last time the bathrooms were fixed in the parks. By a long time. So you think about that part, right? And then you don't have your ongoing exposure, right? Pension deficit and whatever else it is. Mm -hmm. that, I think that's what most people do with their home budgets. Mm -hmm. So if we explain it in those terms, right? I fix the window because it's broken. I don't leave it because I want, you know, brand new jacuzzi outside. That's That's my take on it. I think it's very it's an easy thing to explain we just have to letter plus a couple slides two three slides easy okay i mean lo logistically we're sitting here in the middle of december um, mm -hmm. and we need to present uh, our formal report in march mm -hmm. um, which means that uh, i think ideally this would be done you know end of january beginning of february just calendar wise right um of, so i'm uh okay. if you were to, if you were to come up with something powerpoint wise mm -hmm. like oh if you if you were to come up with something powerpoint wise we can do a tell we can do a telephonic meeting right we can do that right mm -hmm. we have to actually have a meeting meeting mm -hmm. yep you do in, in, unless it was a um a committee is that right so a, a, a subcommittee then are we then or, we can approve it by, and then we can with that Catherine or is that well um you mean a subcommittee of the council or no, a subcommittee no, of this is a subcommittee. Like a, yeah. okay so let's see here's your options um if if we could get through the basic um content of what you want in your initial communication to city council um tonight and you could authorize a subcommittee that is not a quorum to basically approve you know you so you basically tell me this is the content of what we want i take good notes i repeat it back to you we make sure we have a meeting of the minds then i go back to the office i craft something 
during this meeting, I, I believe we could do this. I think you could appoint a subcommittee right. and authorize that subcommittee to basically say yay or nay on the work product that I come up with for you guys. And then and then it can be presented, maybe. I'm not real sure, because it gets really yeah, tricky. Would the committee be able to make changes to it on the fly during that period, or is it well, I guess you know, go back and redo it? Yeah, it's like, it, it's really the best way to do it is to have another meeting, um, unless we can craft out the basics during this meeting. Um, well, so. Well, I, I've, I, I reviewed this online, I made mm -hmm. some notes to myself, and then mm -hmm. I started changing it around. The gist of what you gave us mm -hmm. works for a letter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's the facts, it's what it is. I probably put a little bit more in the preamble part, the background part, to emphasize structural deficit, still there kind of stuff. As for PowerPoints, that's a different deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can convert this into a letter. So I don't think it would be that hard, though. You use the, you fix the preamble a little bit, and I've made some notes here. Then the Citizens Oversight Committee is referenced in the ordinance that was adopted. Then you've got some charts that I think work. But you, you don't need the charts. This, this is her report, though. Oh, this is your report. Yeah. yeah. The, the, this is her. The, the document we have in front of us is. <coughs> well, you're going to give. She the has to report to the mm -hmm. council. Yeah, I have to provide an so, annual report. I mean, this report. is her document, which I think we can speak into. But I mean, it's really she's the owner of okay. this particular document, um, and that's where I, I, I think she's saying that okay. If so she wanted, wants us to come up with a letter, and then was well, it's something. Mm -hmm. If it's from this this group, I think it's it's um, you know it, it needs to express our okay our exactly. our, our, our concerns. Um, if if sounds has concerns, then she can express those herself. But um, yeah, because it, it's very difficult for you to direct me to prepare your letter right. for you. Well, are we all? taught and set on a letter or is the PowerPoint going to work? I mean, if the PowerPoint does what we need it to do and it's presented publicly to the council... Then maybe you don't need a letter. Then you don't really need a letter. I'm, I'm really leaning towards your idea on that because I, 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 I personally like letters but because I read them, but I understand where you're coming from. You. Well, and the other thing is if, if you want to be able them. to... If you want to be able to tell the next council, right? We're going to have, a new, we're going to have another election in November. If you want to be able to tell the next council, this is where we were... Four years later, after we were, this is where we are. You can use those PowerPoint slides to fix, and, and, and we can always put a cover page. You know, the oversight committee, you know, you, you can, ordinance, blah blah blah. You can have the quick blurb on your on the PowerPoint, but I I, I really I think you you hit the nail on the head. The visual part is great, and especially if it's done in a council meeting, right? Yes. Then the public can see it, and if you can get this out where it's you know public can comment on it, I think you. Well, and Killed two birds with one stone. Like in my universe, we use grand jury reports all the time. The county does a ton of grand jury reports, right? Well, those reports are viewable. I can read them. I can get to them. I assume that's what we do here. We put it on. They put it somewhere on the city website, and people can read it. So to me, however you want to do is fine with me. I agree that letter is a letter, but... No, I, I agree with it. I, and, and ultimately, all of you up here, but for me and maybe you, Keith, they're all, these are all numbered people. I'm not. So I'm looking not at numbers guy. and what it says, <laughs> they should be able to put bullet points together. Not, it shouldn't be hard. Budgets here, holes here, yeah, I, 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 here, structural deficit. And I, I agree with yeah. keeping it real simple because, again, you guys are talking. I'm yeah, not no, a no, financial they, person. The rest of them are all numbers people. I, we, I'm you not, and I are not. And when you start talking that <laughs> stuff, it's like, yeah, okay, great. But if you just give me straight, simple stuff, and, again, for the public's benefit, I think we have an obligation to do that. To keep it simple, um, yeah. and I, I really, really do like the PowerPoint, the quick blurb about who we are and what we do, and have it on the council, so the public can see it and comment if so desired. You had your powwow. What do you guys think? <laughs> you want to just do? You can want to open up a PowerPoint document we do right now. Yeah, th and that's, that's, that's what we were thinking. The thing that we were just discussing was um, whatever you display on the video screen is going to be displayed as part of the video record I of this you. meeting, which, which may be fine because you're using this meeting to Deliberate craft right. something. Um, but just keep in mind that whatever we do up on the screen, it is going to get captured as part of the public record for this mm -hmm. meeting. 
I'm it, okay with that. I mean, we're yeah. deliberating about well, what we're going to do. We're not, yeah, okay. It doesn't matter. All right, me. so, okay, well, very are, good. Are we all in agreement on that? You guys okay with that? I'm 100% on it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So I guess just open a PowerPoint document. Yeah, did Prepare. Prepare. That's why. That's why I worded it that way. Okay. Uh, yeah, Catherine would. Would it be okay if we have the public speak on anything at this point before they don't we have do? Anything. Oh, they do not. Yeah, I, that's correct. Uh, oh, I, I okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> That's yeah. Yeah, I know. Sergio is a PowerPoint <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Word, right? On the bottom of Microsoft. Office, Office there. Yeah. No, I think it's on the W. <laughs> My computer at work, not even this far. Yeah, because Word, it's easier for me to type faster. Come on, you know you wanted to open an Excel document. No, no, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is the rest of the committee pretty happy with Excel documents, not me? <laughs> okay. All right, and let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Down on the right. Oh, yeah, thank you. So. No, I mean, like the, um, oh, you yeah, the type. Well, I guess that will do it. Okay. So, slide one, and this is difficult to see. You want a um, statement of committee purpose? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, committee purpose, yeah. Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay. Um, slide two, uh, you, do you want to just dive, do you want to just dive right in on your concerns or do you want a chart of something? What are you looking for on slide two? I, I think we should get into the concerns. That's just my opinion. Yeah. It, are we talking about concerns as a graph where it's deficit, deficit for the last like four years to today or... Personally, because again, I'm not a I'm not a numbers guy like you people are. Um, for me, being if, if for lack of a better term, a lay person on this, I like to see what our concerns are verbalized, and then get into the graphs and, and that type of thing. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, so the concerns. Um, I, I I would. Um, in, in terms of me speaking into the concerns, I think it, it goes beyond, uh, for me, it goes beyond just the numbers, but also the process mm -hmm. of, you know, if we think back on our first meeting, you know, we did not have an opportunity to be able to speak into that first budget, um, which um, I think is highly disappointing. Uh, oh, it was for me, at least. And so, you know, obviously you can't go back in time, but, you know, put it on the record that, hey, council, you guys have a, a duty, in my opinion, to be able to appoint committees Timely, agree. You know, this was voted on in November, I think it was, right? Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, that, that's. I mean, just I, I would say that hey, you've handicapped. That's right. Yes, this, this I committee. I agree. I think that's a very, very. And that's good on. Point. That's on. That's on council. Yes. No, I think that's a, an extremely good point because again, we're we're after the fact. You know. And this is the most important yeah. year. Exactly. This is the first year because everything well, else is plus yeah. or minus. Uh, um. You want another concern? Ongoing structural deficit. Yep. Can we put a year to that? Since when? I mean, you mentioned Great Recession. I you, think it's years. been that way as long as I can remember. <clears throat> and we've just patched things, cut things, done. I mean, city city staff and finance department have done an amazing job of somehow keeping us somehow going in the right direction because we're we're in a good economic times and we still have a structural deficit. I mean. That goes to show you when someone says we can grow our way out of it, it's very hard. It's very hard for Santa Ana to grow its way out of it. I mean, as speaking as a finance person, though, if, I, if I'm hearing this committee say that we're in a structural deficit and we've been in a structural deficit for, you know, for the past 10 years, I mean, in my world, that's, that would be false because 
the city has to have a balanced budget. Okay. I mean, we don't have a choice. Other than, I Correct. mean, you can pull from reserves, but that's still balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so what would it, it's, so, not, it's not so, a, so it's not a deficit and, and this is probably where the city manager you know who's also a CPA sure and yeah. uh, um, you know is probably saying no we're not it's actually you can't have it mm -hmm. as if we're ongoing now you can have you know future you know the graph the, the, the chart the one I call the scary chart you know this chart I like that chart <laughs> So, 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 in my mind, so, uh, so let me play devil's advocate. So that's why people are in shock. That's are? why that's why people are in shock because mm -hmm. we're we're not using household language. Mm -hmm. When you say the city has to be budget has to be balanced every year, okay, I get it. But we're robbing money out of reserves to do it every year. So maybe it's it's a bigger thing. It's the service deficit that the, 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 the Catherine is referring to is that you're you're choosing what services are important so if if the term is not structural deficit what's the term um, might I offer operational deficit ongoing well, operational deficit what I might offer is um, without measure X revenue okay. there is a structural budget deficit with even after measure X revenue there is still a service deficit well, no, no offense again, because I'm not a I'm not a financial person. When you say structural deficit, I mean most people are going to go, "What are you talking about?" Okay. G make it plain English. I mean, I, 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 again, I know you guys operate in that Expe realm. So, so concerns are expenses exceed. There you go. Expenses Just like at ex home. Right? Expenses exceed revenues without measure X. Is that right? Is that the right statement? It, 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 I mean, the, but for there would have been had. I mean, the city would have had no. Well, she's choice. got it. In, she's got it in her report. I mean, she's got okay. thirty-one point nine million more. Expenses exceed revenues. I think that's it. I don't think you need to add anything else. That's a very straightforward so, statement. Right. Expenses exceed revenue. Do you want without measure X expenses exceed revenues or yes? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. measure X is. Um, it, I mean, I've, I've heard you say this, you know, I've heard, I've heard you all try to vocalize some of your concerns and, and what I was hearing was something along the lines of, okay, there's this notion of without measure X expenses exceed revenues and measure X is a limited source of funding, meaning that it's only going to be around for so long. You only have so much of it. Um, so that it it kind of drives home the point that you know this is this is a temporary solution, albeit twenty years, but it's a temporary solution. And, and even more so, that we're, we're take we have a temporary solution, temporary revenue mm -hmm. side, but we are making permanent expenditure okay. decisions. Yeah. So measure X. Is a temporary. It's just, okay. That's it. No, measure X revenue um, is uh, temporary revenue. That's what I, that's what I had in my mind at least. Is temporary, and um, you could put a period after that, and then the next line you could say is one-time expenses should be favored over ongoing expenses. I mean, that's me speaking. I don't know how the rest of you feel. Because that goes to deferred maintenance and all the other road. Like if we fixed one road, right? The life of a road is, what, 20 years? Isn't that what he said last time? I don't yeah, remember. About, yeah. 20 years. about 20 years. I mean, those are the expenses. Oh, goodness. I mean, most companies add capital before they add humans. It's kind of what happens, unfortunately. Yeah, because they can't raise taxes. <laughs> right, because then you have you have FTE costs. Okay.
I think there needs to be something between Measure X revenue as temporary and one time expense. You know. Yeah, like it's just another line. Yeah, I think um, if in, you, in between there. If you hit enter, make it a whole nother sentence. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. I think the statement, it, it, the flow in right. the way it is written right now, which I like, after Measure X revenue is temporary, I think there should be something in there that states something to the effect of we need a balanced budget that matches our expected revenue without Measure X. Compress that statement as best as we can, but that's, I think that's the statement that needs to go between one-time expenses and Measure okay. X revenue. So it'd be just another yeah, bullet point. Ongoing operating revenues. Let's see. I mean, overall, I think the community felt like Major X was going to be adding to yes. quality of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and not two thirds of the revenue, the city budget being, you know, what we what we've had for the past eight years. Okay. It's the budget. The budget should be balanced. I'm sorry. Without Major X one. Yeah, without consideration of Mezzarin's revenue. That's, or have, that's it, accurate. Maybe it should be the um, the uh, ongoing budget. The ongoing budget should be balanced. Sure. The or you could say the pre Measure X budget. Or the however, per, the yeah. However you want to say it. I mean, well, that's, this this year's so. Right. So <laughs> yeah, the, I like that the city budget should be balanced without Measure X revenue moving forward. Yes. And then the one-time statement is perfect. Well, actually, you could say balance. The city budget should should balance without Measure X revenue. Yeah, it should balance, yes. Yeah, instead of should be balanced. All right. Perfect. And, and I, I, would, I would add to that saying, and again, we're getting into a letter as opposed to, but, but just the topic of this, that to where then we're able to use X funds mm -hmm. for, re, you know, right. rain day fund, for... Hey, we want to have top-notch yes. parks, not just okay parks, the best parks. You know, we can have priorities and spe and, and put the prior the money where the priorities of the residents are, as opposed to what's happened. And so, you know, your 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 ongoing budget needs to be balanced. But we still have you know, the voters voted for it, so we have the sixty million. It needs to be prioritized towards what the voters really want from a quality of life perspective. But I think that that's the problem is everybody was kind of misled as to where that money was going to go. I mean, everybody, my impression when I read the ballot measure was all this money is going to do all these wonderful things, and that's not what's happening. And, and to me, that's the biggest problem we've got. There isn't, there is no, there really is no oversight and input on how this money gets spent. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um, you, could, you know what? Another, another bullet is um, concerns is reserved reserves are used too frequently, and we should work towards having a legitimate reserve. Because what you said was last year, we well, you used reserve to fill the hole mm -hmm. as a stopgap. As a stopgap, mm -hmm. and, and and I assume they did that every year to balance the budget. There was probably never a year in the last eight years where you had excess revenues over expenses, or did you? Yeah. Uh, to clarify, Committee Member Leo, um, the, the city budget for 1819, you're, you're absolutely correct. There was a $10.2 million structural deficit that was identified, and um, one time funding or one time reserves was utilized to fill that gap, if you will. Uh, for the prior years, there were, that was the revenues on the budget was balanced. So operating revenues equaled operating expenditures. There were some service. Cuts or certain priorities were not <clears throat> funded, um, as evidenced by some of those funded positions, in order to balance the budget. But uh, in actually physically using or transferring sure. reserves, that did not occur. Okay. Yeah. And, and so we have to mean, remember that the, the city has a reserve policy, and they're still, even after utilizing the 10.2 in the budget, they were still within that city policy of. You know, of the reserve policy, they have the 16.67 percent and the one percent. So let me ask. How would you, what is a healthy reserve? Do we have a healthy reserve? I mean, now measure X, I assume we're okay. 
but what is a healthy preserve? Because mm -hmm. if you want to bring the fiscal health of this city back to where it should be, mm -hmm. we should have healthy preserves. Um, and, and quite honestly, I can't give you a quick answer to that. It's okay. debatable. Um, because the, the correct way to establish a reserve is to do a risk analysis. Because when you have a reserve, you're basically mitigating risk. And um, so you have to do that risk analysis to establish the reserve. Pulling a number out of an air out of the air is not a risk analysis, and and there has been no risk analysis done here at the city. That's the proper way to establish your reserve. And in general, I can tell you that larger cities with larger budgets require less of a percentage reserve as smaller cities with smaller budgets. So, for example, um, if you have a small city, I used to work for Rancho Palos Verdes. Mm -hmm. um, for that city, maybe a 50% reserve is the right number because it's, it's small potatoes. But for city of LA, maybe 5% is the right number so, because it's so very large. So would the language be appropriate um, concerns? No no established healthy reserve i mean I, I, what i'm trying to say is we got this money right if you you many of you in the room are accountants what if you were managing this budget as your home budget you would start to slowly set aside a little bit of money every year yeah. just in case something hits the fan and we're in trouble so we could be in trouble if measure after revenue runs out, right, in 10 years or 20 years. So what I'm trying to do is I'd like to raise the concern of, because the voters understand, we all understand, we, hey, I get an extra extra paycheck at Christmas time. Well, I don't spend it all on, I put a little bit away. So I don't know what you'd say. I don't know what the exact language I'm looking for is, but it's something that, for me as a voter, would say, okay, well, if I need it, I can take it. I can use it. Yeah. I get it out of it. The first should statement, I think, should be followed by another should statement that would be indicative of that. I would recommend something to the effect of measure X revenue should improve the quality of life of all residents. Period. Right. Better to say it was so, so, so measure uh, yeah, added be, as intended. Yeah. <laughs> That's really basic, but it's really. I can see the cops come in and say, "Well, we improve the quality of your life." That's 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 a powerful statement. Yes. I like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. So. One time is great, because now we're now we're talking about how to use the money. The, the third statement there, uh, the city budget should balance without Measure X revenue. Mm -hmm. um, it, it feels to me like maybe it, it could be a little clearer to say something like the, the, um, the permanent city budget, the ongoing, the, you know, the permanent level of service, something along those lines that you know, basically indicates what you're trying to shoot for. Um, well. You, you, did you use measure, you didn't use measure X f funds for last year's budget gap, right? You used reserves for last year's budget gap. Yeah. Oh, the budget? Yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah when, the, when the budget was originally adopted for 1819, it was using reserves. And then when they did the, pass the POA contract, you used measure X funds for that? Um, they, they, or did yes. they rob reserves and put the reserves back in afterwards? Technically, hard to say because it all went into the general fund. Understood, understood. So <laughs> I think I understand what you're saying. Uh -huh. So the question is, is that we learned here that Measure X funds went to fill the structural, well, the existing deficit. Mm -hmm. And I think, And I think what our commissioner here is saying is that He'd like to see the budget balance without Measure X funds at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the city should have a balanced budget regardless of Measure X funds. But see, but what they'll say is we always balance it. Right. 
but it's it, it is because they're using reserve without dipping into the reserve. And, and I guess the, it gets complicated because you don't want them to hit the reserve either, right? And you can't just say you're balancing the budget every time you siphon the reserve. That that yeah. That, okay, so a portion of measure revenue was used. That's definitely a concern. So is that something more of where you're trying to go with this? You know, basically saying that, you know, you, you were bothered by the fact that right out of the gate, Measure X was used yeah. to help balance the budget. And, and you yeah. can say, you, you I would say, say, I wouldn't say service level though. I'd say budget because to me, service level. You, I'm sorry, yeah, service gonna, level is again. I'm a lay person. It's like, okay, what are they talking about? So a portion of Measure X revenue was used to balance the existing budget. Well, and or you could just be more clear, more specific, and say the fiscal year eighteen nineteen right. budget. And I think you need a qualifier in there to say a large portion. Yes. Or the largest portion. Whatever or, portion you want to. I mean, use. just saying a, a portion. Significant. But yes. There you yeah. go. Catherine, I would recommend and you use parentheses where where you want to identify service level for those people who understand what that means after budget. I don't, I don't. I think it's a good thing that you used it. But I, I do agree with um, the chair that budget is a little bit more layman's and it's something that m most people are going to be able to mm -hmm. palette. A significant portion of Measure X revenue was used to balance FY18-19 budget without, maintained, maintained. Without, without, I would say without, I, I want to say it, without making They, they basically didn't follow city staff's recommendation. They didn't follow your recommendation to cut the easy 1.9. They just chose not to. And they waited for this money to come and then they kept the server, they kept it the same. And what I'd like to say is you, you used Measure X money to plug a hole and didn't make the hard choice. Did, didn't make the, well actually the easiest of choices you guys identified cuts. <clears throat> and going back to what was there before, a significant portion of measure X revenue was used to balance the FY18 budget. And going forward, and going forward, I don't want, I mean, going forward, we don't want measure X funds used to specifically with the budget. We want it to be like in addition to. So I don't know how we say that. And it goes to the quality of life, it goes to what yeah. they intended the voters thought that was going to be used for. The voters thought the budget was balanced and they said, oh, we're giving you extra $60 million a year. Yeah. Fix the things that haven't been fixed. It didn't happen. No, I, I get what you're saying. It's kind of hard to get it in there. Yeah, maybe it needs another sentence. I don't know. Yeah, I think it does. Okay. So. Yeah. I, 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 instead of. It, well, I think maybe it flows right now. I, to, ma hey. Maintain the existing service level, I think, is a better than. I think the but way yeah, the way it's written, level. yeah. I think the way it's written in context does touch on it that does. point. It does because the next sentence says to improve the life. Yes. So it's it's a little indirect, but I think it, it I think it needs to be a little bit as as less wordy as possible. Is that is, the, is that right, Grant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like, yeah. I, think, I think for like a suggestion is measure X was intended to improve the quality of life for for all city of Santa residents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so my my sentence I just wrote was ongoing measure X revenue is largely largely keeping the status quo instead of increasing the quality of life of residents. Uh, I think that that. You know, it's essentially keeping everything the same as yeah, it's been, exactly. instead yeah. of increasing. Yeah, there's no benefit. No even additional down benefit. to the cops that they're going to hire. That's about what was budgeted before. Exactly. Okay, so I can add yeah. that in here just to. Okay, so read your sentence again. Uh, Tim. Yeah. So I have ongoing major X revenue is largely keeping the status quo instead of increasing the quality of life of residents. Improving or increasing? Improving. Improving. There you go. Yeah, we don't need the next. I don't know if we need the next sentence. Okay. Then I think dump And then you can yeah, dump that. Yeah, you can dump the next one. Yeah. Yeah, you eliminate it. Okay. 
Posso. It's not really against your one time expense, it should be favored. I thought that's what you're saying that that's not a, a concern. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not a concern because they did exactly the opposite. So a concern would be is ongoing expenses were approved. It almost. I mean, it almost has to be backwards. It almost seems like this is slide three, which is oh, uh, recommendations. Because right. yeah. now it's getting into should statements. You yeah. know, th this should happen. This should happen. So then. So then the other the other concern then so then the concern would be is the opposite of it. So the last concern would be is ongoing expenses were incurred immediately after passage of measure X. Okay. Does that make or recurring expenses, however you want to do it. Yeah. Because what they did was they approved the contract, University. which if I read the language of the contract Someone will tell me, oh, we're not going to have a large police for model police aren't going to retire this year because, well, in reality, we sweeten the pot so they stay two years, and then in two years we're going to have it done. And that, I, I took the mayor up on it, and I said, look, when you guys say we're going to hire 50 cops, you have to say a certain number is going to retire because we just heard that from yeah. over here. Yeah. So but I guess what I'm trying to say is just be honest with us. Tell us, <laughs> tell us what we're doing. So that's okay. uh, but. You guys were here for that. They approved the cop contract, which was a, which is ongoing expenses, right, for you guys? Or recurring expenses, right? Mm -hmm. That was the first thing out of the chute. Mm -hmm. They waited for Measure X, and boom, and then they did the contract. Okay. So we have here. Yes, that's, that was, that's a concern, yes. And that also goes back to Tim's concern, which was we didn't even get to make recommendations into the budget. Because I guarantee you we probably would have said don't do it. Mm -hmm. We or we would have said, look at the entire picture. Yeah. You know, look get, at, get your inventory of needs. Right. Like anyone a business well, family would do. And I think to the city manager and to staff's credit, they're trying to get they're trying to get the inventory together. You know, we've heard parks, we've heard public works. Which Do you want to move this statement here to the last bullet? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Personal. Okay. So you want it as still the first bullet? There's the first bullet. Yeah, um, because we, yeah. that was our primary mandate and we couldn't mm -hmm. even do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the recommendations. Okay, so is, it, can you take a moment to just reread all of these concerns and make sure that as a group you're happy with them? Slide two, I'm, I'm okay with. I think in the second sentence, sentence you could make that last measure X revenue is temporary another uh, bullet point. Yeah. Okay. You might have a real estate problem there, yeah. but that's already gonna have one. Make it work. Tighten up your margin at the top. You have to. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> when you get <laughs> when you get to a slide, yeah. Oh, I understand. Um and maybe once you've crafted the content of it you can um you can authorize me to make it uh, visibly appealing. <laughs> okay. And maybe not me, maybe my staff. <laughs> Is there better well, at that? I'm thinking Sergio is the guy here. <laughs> I wish it was <laughs> I have a question. What's going to go underneath the statement of com like committee purpose? Or do we have something that we're supposed to put there? Or like what are, what's our plan with that? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. The reason why I'm asking is because that first bullet that you said you didn't want to switch from concerns, if we're going to have a statement, then it should be like, well, the oversight committee was not able to make any recommendations, and for that reason, now these are the concerns we have. I don't know, that's just my opinion, because I, I see what you're saying, like, that oversight committee, yes, it's a concern, but more than anything, I feel like the following bullets are concerns. So I don't know if there's a statement that's going there, then kind of like flowing it through. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay, so let's see here. Well, what what I, is it? I would leave that bullet like, there, but I think uh, to your point, add that in is our purpose. Yeah, because I'm trying to figure out what are we doing for the statement, the statement of the, the, the purpose. What are we going to put on there? Like, what's our yeah? Goal and, with that? and it's up to you. Do you? I mean, you could look at page 19 of your agenda <laughs> packet. 
do you want to repeat what's there at the bottom, A, B, C, D, and E, or do you, you know, what do you want to do? I personally don't. Okay. Um, I know. I, I, in my in my mind, our our mandate was to serve the citizens and make sure the money was spent correctly and and have some, supposedly some input on it. Um, I mean, maybe what we could put is also just the actual language that was in the ballot, just so it's a reminder to the to the citizens and they can see it. Because I mean, yeah, we can bring this to them, but some of them probably don't even remember what was on that ballot language. The, the, or I don't so know. the ba well, so there's there's two pieces here. The face of the ballot language, like if you just looked at the right. the little paragraph that said mm -hmm. yes or no on the ballot, mm -hmm. it's that's the paragraph that said, right. um, "Shall the city charge a sales tax right. to be used for you know maintaining nine one one or improving nine one one response, mm -hmm. uh, retaining police officers, and fixing streets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera." There's that language, mm -hmm. and then the full ballot measure was inclusive of an ordinance that had all the language in it and the ordinance has the specific language that says um, the committee will act in an advisory role to the city council in reviewing the annual revenue and expenditures of funds from the tax authorized by this article and so in that ordinance which was part of what the the voters approved maybe they didn't read it but that's what was approved um, it, it really talks about just acting <coughs> in the advisory role and you know reviewing the revenues and expenditures it doesn't really say um, it, it's when you get to the establishing resolution for right. this committee that it says make recommendations well, to the city a, council I would I would do pieces of it I would say that you know Pursuant to the ordinance, mm -hmm. all right, or pursuant to the ballot, whatever, whatever language you want to use, the committee was established um, to to act as an advisory role to the city council in reviewing the annual revenue expenditures of Measure X. We don't have to say funds pursuant to the article. We can say Measure X, right? Mm -hmm. So the voter knows, yeah. and then we can say um, the committee. Um, um, uh, we'll prepare an annual report to the council and make recommendations for the council's consideration. I think that gets to the why we're here, yeah. right? Then we don't use all the verbose language that True. the lawyers would want to use. While, while you were saying that, Commissioner, I, I, mm -hmm. I thought of something that may um, okay. you know sound sure, easier to the ear, sure. at least in the in the front end. Uh, review, assess, and recommend to the city council. Review, assess, and recommend to the city council. Well, I mean, be careful here. You don't want right. to create new language for yourself. Right. So it would be in reviewing, what did you say, assessing? Review, assess, and recommend. But the ordinance didn't say make right. recommendations. The resolution right. says the make city, recommendations. The city council's approval, approved resolution says that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, pursuant to the ordinance, we're in an advisory role in reviewing Measure X expenditures, uh, uh, revenues and expenditures. Right. Measure. Yeah, I, I, I think we. we I, I would prefer to stick with the actual. You know, that that could be in the the first. I don't think I have. A, I personally don't have a problem with with also saying that. You know, this group also views its role. Well, actually, not only speaking to or as advisory to the council, but you know, speaking on behalf of the the citizen. The citizen advocate is my is how I view myself. Right. The citizen advocate. So I don't. I don't have a problem with adding. Uh, well, you know, what, what, how what we're viewing ourselves as, though, either. I don't either. I, I agree. That. I agree. And I think that's probably where you're, where, where you're going. I, I think so. I think I, yeah. I, yeah I think I would. When we say committee, we should probably say citizen oversight committee. Yeah. To yeah. emphasize the facts that we're citizens, we're not non non paid non elected non -paid. officials. Yeah, non elected officials. <laughs> right. That's exactly. What we're non, non, no compensation um, either. So it's no. Uh, I think we it. can do a little bit better here. The committee um, pursuant to city council resolution. You don't even have to say that. You, you can just say pursuant to the city council or whatever. It is a city council resolution. The, um, the committee, the citizen the oversight. Right. Citizen oversight committee. Yeah. Um, 
was established. Makes budget recommendations. Yep. But we're, we're, we're not though. That's the problem. We've no, got. we we will next in March. We will. But that's what the yeah, re that's what the resolution says. In March, says. that's what we're going to do. The resolution okay. right. says that you'll make budget recommendations. All right. So, okay, pursuant to the ordinance adopted by the voters, the committee's done. Okay. Are are you okay with what's there? I'm sorry. Did you have? Yeah. The, since the ordinance is actually by the the council, and maybe uh, referring to the language is uh, pursuant to the measure. The measure adopted, approved by the voters. Okay. Um, right, because it's technically ordinance. an ordinance, right? When, I mean, yeah, the ordinance is but, uh, technically ruled by council. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. so say pursuant to the measure. Good, good catch. Adopted by the voters. Mm -hmm. Measure, yeah, it's actually okay. better. The citizen right. oversight committee is to act in council to city council and measure I think the word is shall make budget recommendations. That's what it says from here in the ordinance. Okay. Now, what was it, Abigail, that you wanted to make sure that was on slide one? Um, well, no, I hadn't mentioned the first bullet point on the second slide, but I guess um, a member Carpenter said he'd prefer on the second slide. So okay. Is it, that's fine with me. Yeah, my only reason for that is that it's a concern that we, we didn't get to do that. Granted, okay. we were supposed to do that or given that. I don't know how they could, well, they could have done it a little faster, but not much. But yeah. Okay, so are you happy now with slide one as a group? I, I personally would, would also like to be able to say that, you know, individual members also feel that they're here to represent the citizens mm -hmm. in, their, in their views. I mean, it may not be a, count, it may not be a committee mm -hmm. charge, but I think it, it feels like all of us, you know, have a sense of, uh, you know, uh, duty to represent the community. The committee's overwhelming, just as a suggestion or for consideration, is the committee's role, I think you mentioned it, Chair, is at citizen advocacy. Yes, sir. And that, more than likely in slide one, maybe weave that in, and it's kind of what, what Catherine is here, is, is the Director Downs is uh, indicating is, each member has a sense of duty to present and advocate for the community. Does, does that kind of fulfill well, that citizen advocacy first statement? First, we'd rather have citizen rather than community as an advocate. I don't. I, to me, that's a little bit ambiguous. To me, I'm more of an advocate for the for the citizens. That's how I view my role. I mean, mm -hmm. how everybody else views theirs is up to them, but that's my view of it. The, the only consideration for change on that that I would make would be um, each committee member feels a sense of duty as opposed to has, because has makes it sound like that's part of what we're charged with, <laughs> even though I think that that may be implied. But the or but the um, you know the okay. actual language of our charter doesn't indicate that. It actually is more towards the council as opposed to the. And I I I, I don't mind the word citizens, although I would probably prefer residents. I agree. Okay. The reason she's using citizens because that's what it says. Mm -hmm. you, why don't you just leave it as for the citizens and residents? There you go. Make everybody happy. <laughs> right. Then it doesn't matter. Happy okay. Citizens and residents. Yeah. That's kind of redundant. Yeah, I well, well, I think residents well, is fine. Okay. Uh, let's, I'm let's, okay with res let's, citizens let's, also. Let's so. vote on one, guys. What do you want? I'm for citizens. Okay. Just if we keep it consistent, say citizens. Fine. Thank you. And then slide two, and everybody's good with slide two? Okay, now we need recommendations. Don't write any of this down yet, but, <laughs> but I feel like in the recommendation, you know, over the past few um, uh, meetings, 
you know, we're getting more and more information about the different departments and their needs. And we, I think we, whether this happens or not, but we need to have a, um, a, a full inventory of what the needs are and then addressing them as a whole, as opposed to, you know, the term I've been using, you know, first to the table is the first to eat. So however, we, however if others feel that way, or not, and then you know we can wordsmith it into however we want. But Vice Chair, let's let's discuss that a little bit because I, I, I agree with you, but I think I think if the mandate is quality of life, safety, and per the language, we're, we're all quite hinged on the fact that we anticipated our role to be more focused on that which was written inside of the. Mm -hmm. measure I, I like I'd like I like what you're saying but I think that there needs to be more focus as per the measure in those areas that we were charged with specifically quality of life homelessness maintenance of parks youth and senior services I think that would be a very bold statement yeah I, I I'm 100% I'm, I'm fine fine with that so you're know, taking the inventory of those actual items that's 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 um, you know, which is what we've kind of been yeah. trying to do, I think, through the departmental, kind of walking through the departments. Yeah, I think when earlier when you mentioned uh, when you mentioned it, I, I thought you were more general to the whole city rather than those Got specific it. departments. I think yeah. those specific departments is right. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can see how that could be taken that way, but yeah, I was definitely more concerned with the listed items. Um, Perfect. You can say in measure X, make it easier for you. Mm. Each type of service? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you read the articles, how much money we're spending on homelessness, well, that's not, I understand the city's spending that money, but like, as I told Supervisor Doe yesterday, the county's got to pony up some money. Yeah. The city's paying more than the county at times. Yeah. Okay. And I, I would maybe either add on or do another line on that and then and prioritize and determine a prioritization for it's been, it's, uh, I think it should be another line item. Okay. Personally. Yeah. The city should develop a list of priorities. Because I feel like that def that will help. Tim, that will help when those who want to get fed first get to the line and say, oh, we're not a priority. Even though they, they believe they're a priority. Uh, Commissioner, so what, what I'm reading is really something that we're going to take on, right? We're going yeah. to provide recommendations, recommendations right. with the priority. Yeah. 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 I mean, perfect. I mean, uh, but I mean, go ahead. But the way it's read now says the city should develop a list of priorities. But I think we should say that the measure X should influence that list of priorities. Because right now you're leaving it up to the city. In my mind, that means the council. Okay. Does that make sense? If I say the city, in my mind, that's the council. It's not us. Mm -hmm. So I, my, the whole point of this, our recommendations, is that mm -hmm. we should have greater influence on how that list of priorities is developed. That, that's so, my take on it. So would you add the, the city along with the oversight committee? In my take, mind, the, right. the, the, the oversight committee should have influence on how that list is prior, prioritized. Well, we're going to make a recommendation in March, right? Mm -hmm of how the money can be spent. But you see what I'm saying, though? I understand what you're saying. The city, to me, implies okay. the council. It doesn't imply any of us sitting in this room. Yeah, I, 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 I think the city should provide an inventory of needs to the Measure X committee, too. Again, the city takes an inventory. OK, great. Wonderful. What good does that do us as a committee? How about spend, spending, priori spending priorities 
need to be made based upon the inventory of needs or um, in alignment with in alignment there you go yeah in alignment with yeah. well, where are our creatives here you're saying, you're saying that we're the finance guys we need the hey creatives. listen you guys are good you know I mean come on how many recommendations is that for okay does that sound right spending priorities should be made in alignment with the needs identified or yes but, but the, but my whole point on this again is is we're not including ourselves in this. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not we're not saying right. measure. I think in my mind, Measure X should have influence on the spending priorities. That that's what I think. Well, my, I that's mean, my mandate personally as right, a citizen. But, right, but all we're going to be able to do at the end of the day is make re recommendations as to what the Measure X funds can be used for. I agree. But spending priorities should be made in alignment with, with the needs identified. Well, who's identifying the needs and who's making Well, I'll tell you right now, we're probably doing more than what the council does when we dig in. She's never been asked to give a pre-recession budget. The police were never asked all the questions we asked them. No, I, I fully, I, and, I, I and, fully and, appreciate and you, that. And I've heard three departments in a row basically say, I'm doing a but, an assessment. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not only us asking. I guarantee you it's the city manager's office saying, what the heck's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, when we can't... when. When you and I can't go online and say the roads in your neighborhood are going to be fixed 2021, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, I go to Anaheim, click on the button, it says it. No, I, I don't. So that's that. so. I think that they're. I think that staff's being pushed to give assessments of their own budget. So the question becomes: Is we're we're actually pouring gasoline on the fire right now because these folks are being pushed. Like she was pushed to pre present something to us. And she's already been pushed by no. I, I fully, boss I fully appreciate it, but to, to me again, and this is just okay. That sounds that that's better. The committee. There we go. That's what I'm after. I'm going to add Measure X committee in there just just for the heck yeah. of it. Yeah. But that's my point. Is my mandate I, I here understand. is I to understand. help direct where this money goes. Okay. Based on what I hear from the people. There you go. There you go. I like it. And, and we'll probably do that anyway through our own connection with our city council members, but it's better to put it in the document. Okay. Is that a decent list of recommendations for now, guys? I mean, we're going to have more come March. Uh, personally, I, I, I think we need to just, I think we got the point across because to your point, the report is the grand jury document, right? That's that doesn't go away. Is. It's there. Um, right. It's hopefully will be available to the public. And that, and you know when when they go through the budget process, someone may, someone may say, "Hey, the citizens oversight committee said you should do one-time spending." What a, what you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean I it can be used as a advocacy tool by citizens. Well, I agree, and that's that's to my point. Is that's, that's what we in my mind we are citizen advocates. Well, and it, this it, is just getting the, letting the city council know that we intend to do our job, or at least I intend to right. do my job. Well, and I and, and 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 I think if anything, it also helps staff. Mm -hmm. It helps staff say, we're not the only ones telling you what you should do. Mm -hmm. Your residents you appointed are telling you, please look at these things before you make those decisions. I, I, I'm personally fine with what's there. I think that's enough. But, yeah, uh, I'm going to ask yeah. them. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. Don't let me influence anybody else. Anybody else have anything to you add? Add one more bullet, say more to come in March. I mean, you know, they'll be so happy with us. <laughs> more, more to come. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. To be continued. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Right? It's like, oh, you can just see. You already know the eyes are going to roll. Fiscal year 2021 budget recommendation. Right? That's what happened. Yeah, because we're going to give. I mean, lis listening to what she had to say about the bathrooms, I mean, a million bucks or so to fix seven bathrooms. That's People nothing. will be. It's nothing, but people will think, hey, the money's going to what I thought it was going to go for. Well, it, it, it's the public perception, right, that you actually see some results for what you I get. Agree. Because, I mean, the 60K, the 60 million, uh, you know, you go to your neighborhood meetings and everybody goes, well, where's the money? And you go, oh, you know, right. it's one to right. pay the deficit. Well, and what concerned me was what, and I don't know if well, you were here, Keith, some, yeah. some others weren't here, when Catherine said the city council is going to pick and choose which streets they're going to slurry and oh, do. Yeah. I'm like, excuse me? Yeah. There's a public works director, and he or she can decide, tell you what the priorities are, and we'll slurry these streets. You don't get to pick just because one neighborhood's complaining. No, I, I agree. I mean, that's like discretionary funds. Go, but still, if you want to give yourself discretionary funds, I mean, there's a, there's a, the public works, if I listen correctly, they know which streets are the worst. 
Well, they've been doing their assessment. I mean, he was pretty right. clear about what they've done as far as their assessments go. Yeah. That's what we need to get away from, this hand-picked projects. Follow the plan. So, Catherine, do you need us to give you any... Uh, any direction right. on ability to yeah. refine this? And, I actually have and, and, several and, questions. Yeah. So um, the first is, do you, on your slide one, you talk about the purpose. Um, do you actually want, or, or do you want to include a statement, um, something along the lines of, um, you know, the committee has met five times to date and uh, received reports from PD, Public Works, Recreation, and the, ci the city's auditor and the city's sales tax consultant. Do you want to, like, basically report out what you've done? That makes sense to me. Well, I'm not as married to that because okay. I think this is a, I, I hate to say it, but like a warning shot. Uh, a, a high level flag of what you're going to get in March. Okay. You know, I think that that type of detail is great for that full report. Yeah. Gotcha. But that's just my opinion. I'm just, okay. I'm just throwing that out there, guys. Okay. And I would hope that the council understands what their committees are doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Partly, you know, maybe that's a little optimistic. But, <laughs> right. Uh, hopefully, they're you know on top of it. Um, but maybe okay. it, so. I would view that as more of a. Hey, does the public need to be notified of this as opposed to right. council? Gotcha. But. And then um, you had spoke earlier about including some graphics. Do you want any graphics think, put into this presentation, I, or is it just content at this point? To me, I think it's just content right now because the annual report, we can, we can put the graphs. We have more time, right? The annual report can talk about expenses and revenues and... But this is preliminary recommendation after a few meetings, pretty much is what we're giving them. And the full report's going to come as required by the initiative. The only thing I would say, though, on that is though, I think it would be nice because, again, I think when we all sat down here and found out how much money sure. had really gone to pay the deficit uh, and how much really was going for the Measure X uh, allotment, uh, I think that would be really nice for everybody to see. And you guys are better at that kind of stuff than that would ever be but uh, to show how <laughs> where the money really went right because I don't again I so would you so are you imagining a, a table are you imagining I, I, what I, 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 we don't, didn't did you provide us a slide the first at the first time where it kind of laid out where what happened the first God, I thought there were powerpoints we got the first time I think something simple you know we were supposed to get 60 million and 40 million went to pay deficit yes. and 20 million went for that I think it simple. was I think it was the first time because then you gave us because then you made your first cut at how do I put the money where do I Mm -hmm. I, I want to say it was the first meeting because mm -hmm. you laid it out pretty simply to us and I think that's why we're all in shock and then you said here's what I'm trying to do is and I don't want to create a separate fund and I, I can't remember which one it was, was the first it may have been a simple it may have been a couple simple slides that you did because those were I think that's what Keith's referring to yeah I mean something that just shows we had X this is how much went to deficit this is what really and then we don't have to recreate the will Yeah, or even easy, yeah, or easy pretty much, yeah. Even, even simpler. You find one, Sergio, that you think is... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that... Uh, mm -mm. Yeah, we're looking for what... Vice uh, uh, Chair Johnson, a, a line graph? Would you recommend a line graph? No, I'm, <clears throat> I'm kind of drawing, and, and I think that a pie chart would be real, real effective on something like this. So, like for example, a part like if I envision how the April through June of nineteen, so the one we just just finished, you know, a pie chart of where did X go? I mean, it's you know, I just kind of drew it out real quick here. That you know, you have you know two thirds of it going to uh, going to the deficit, and then. Uh, you know, a, a little less than a third going, or actually a little bit more than a third going to PD, and then you know, a little slice to uh, labor savings, uh, labor cuts saved. I, um, and then, uh, but I don't know if that's that would go in this type of a report, or if it'd be in our. But I think a pie chart of hey, where 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 did it go? I think it's simple. I um, agree with that. Instead of trying to backdoor the entire budget and where measure it's just where's that money going 100% where that money is going for that 
quarter. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's it. It's simple. That's, I like that. It's simple. Yeah, that's simple. what I'm talking. That's what I'm saying. Something simple, a pie chart. If well, we got. Works. Well, we got. If we got, if it was a quarter of it, right? So it's supposedly fifteen million dollars, right? How much of that went to budget deficit? And well, it'd be the ten point two, ten point. Ten point two, and then you said so how much went to about two thirds. So two thirds of the ten point two. Yeah. I don't know if that matters. So that's like 6.5. No, no, two thirds of the 15 is the 10.2. Okay, so, and then there's 4.8 left. Yeah, right? Two thirds. Mm -hmm. And you said some of it went to labor I mean, savings and some went. Where yeah, else? so I mean, you'd have what about 10% uh, going to labor savings? Uh, what did I write down? Labor cuts. Well, that would, <laughs> which so, is, that would be, I mean, so that would be a revenue term. pie chart, right? The revenue was mm -hmm. 15, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X went to. Deficit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. X went to public safety, and but do we want to do we want to include that in this? Uh, well, that would the be the first salary well, across, or is that a you know the and the the March report? Um, which I mean, I think our focus of, and I'm not opposed to doing it in this in this setting because I do think that the March report really should be more forward focused. But the Mar uh, isn't the March report going to be the first year of tax revenue, right? It won't be a full year. It'll be three quarters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the 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 timing of this was right, not thought off. out, in off. my opinion, to work to it's align with. It would be aligned with a calendar year company, mm -hmm. but not aligned with a fiscal year um, city cycle. Well, Catherine, do you feel that what you've got down there says where the first fifteen million went in your staff report? Yeah. Okay. But then maybe we don't have to. I mean, maybe we don't have to do a pie chart then for the first quarter. Well, well, and, and, well, and did we? And Keith, did we get our point across that Measure X was spent? I said, well, we say it right there: significant portion of Measure X revenue. Well, I, I think it'd just be nice to show that the oh, anticipated gosh. income or the anticipated revenue was sixty million. Forty million went to deficit, and only twenty million was, was but, al allocated. Well, well that, that's forward-looking on nineteen twenty. Right. Um, one of your tasks is to report backwards right. and make recommendations for forwards. And what you're talking about is a mix of back and forward. Yeah. It, well, it's, well, th just t to be clear, though, if you look at the ballot measure, what it said was 60 million in revenue, and that's what everybody thought was going to go to the city as a citizens. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought when we first sat, sat down here. That's what we all thought. My point on this is to say, hey, look, y'all were told you're getting 60 million, and what you ended up with was 20 million because 40 million went to the deficit. That's what I think is important about all of this. Well, I think but that, that's not that's not quite accurate. Mm -hmm. um, the I I think that you you had made the decision that you wanted to do this in two pieces. Right. The mm -hmm. establishing resolution basically envisioned that you would do one annual report to the council in March. and that would be in March because you would want to provide your budget recommendations to the council in March going forward so you would be looking backwards at the at the prior fiscal year to say this is what happened in the prior fiscal year and then looking forward this is this these are our recommendations but this this is kind of a separate deal here where it it, oh, it sounds like you guys just basically want to you know provide an opening uh, an opening statement or a preview if you will well, and so i think that this preview is less about your annual report and more about just making some commentary um correct me if i'm wrong but even with, and I, I'm trying to accommodate Keith's, Keith's question, even with just the one quarter, mm -hmm. we can show what Keith's wanting to show, mm -hmm. right? Because of the 15 million we got approximately, yeah. I, it I divvies could, itself up to mm -hmm. what you're saying, Keith, is that this went to fix mm -hmm. an existing hole, mm -hmm. a good chunk of the rest went to public safety, mm -hmm. and there was a little bit left over for labor savings and other stuff. And, and, and a pie chart will show that. Mm -hmm. for, for the measure it. X stuff then my point on all this is to show that how that not we all didn't get what we thought we we're gonna get you mm -hmm. know that's well, that the first that first quarter 
Yeah, we'll have to we see. We didn't get it. And, and we're going to be able to do another pie chart or another graph in March to show three quarters worth. No, I fully appreciate that. But I think that right now, again, for the for the benefit of the citizenry to show what's happening right now. Because, I mean, the, I you know, know, it all I sounds know good on, we, you know. But I don't know how we do that. I mean, with, with the, the, time, the timing of, of, right, of March is, is off. But, I mean, the, the way that from, from, my, from my mind, in that March report, you really have three periods that you have to address. Mm -hmm. You have to address the prior, I'll just use coming up in March right now. We have to address the prior 1819. Mm -hmm. so you have four. to address the current budget, okay? It's not done at that year. The current year is right. not done at that point. Quarter, yeah. But you're addressing the current budget of, at that point it would be 1920, and then you're speaking into the forward-looking budget of, mm -hmm. of the 2021 budget. You, in my opinion, in March, we have to hit all three of those. Mm -hmm. And then it's now it's just a rolling cycle to where each year, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, who knows who's going to be in this committee in the future, but, uh, you know, in a, roll, in a rolling cycle, you're able to then just keep moving that forward because the, based upon the timing of March, um, it's which I think the most important of those three is probably <coughs> that forward-looking yes. portion. But, you know, I think we, sh we need to address, uh, at least touch on, you know, pie chart 18, 19, where to go. Pie chart of where the budget, you know, the current budget, the one that we're in right now, mm -hmm. you know, wh 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 where it was and budgeted then, for. And I don't... You now I'm assuming that you guys will keep with the, well, those and budgets. And, and, and I don't, and I don't, needed, I don't think anybody disagrees. The question is, what, do, what pie chart do we put in this piece compared to March, if any. Do we have to put one, though? Well, I'm or trying to. Keith, 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 Keith wants to try to start. The reason why I'm saying it. that we yeah, shouldn't right. is because I feel like with, like, Member Lugo, what he said when we said the last one, it's like mm -hmm. this is our starting point. We're, like, setting the, the stage. Table. This mm -hmm. is what we're doing. I don't think we need to put so much into it. It's like here's the points, and because it's so simple. It needs to be straightforward. I feel like if we put too much into it, it's going to be, like, I feel like it'll overwhelm people and I feel like I like your idea like 100% in March I think we should do the before now and then what we're looking forward to like that's the future that's just what I think I mean no. I, I'm all for I, I'm, I'm go with consensus I don't, I'm not gonna sure. my, my only thing is we're saying hey look a significant amount of money went to uh, other expenditures okay and you if you'd like you could make that a more specific statement you could say um, 10.2 million of Measure X revenue was used to balance the 18 budget. But, but that doesn't, if you're not privy to the information we have, that's really kind of not that meaningful. Or 10.2 out of what? Or, or, or no, I, 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 two thirds? If, if, if other members don't want to have a pie chart that time. Or you I, could I, just. I mean, a consensus. You, you, you could just say two thirds that. of Measure X revenue was used to balance. That's. That says something. That, that, that would, I think. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, okay with that. If you, right. Catherine, if you feel that you on in your report, like you're that. able to defend some of what we recommend, which I think you are. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think she can because she 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 puts real numbers in her thing, and okay. I think sometimes, yeah. So maybe that yeah. does it right there. And then parentheses two thirds. Please. Oh, oh! I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then like this. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. Are, yeah, you forget it. We're dealing with Catherine. <laughs> these are numbers, people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's okay. Yeah, that's a, that's and a, that's I think the rest of it. I, I think it. Uh, you know. Okay. Um, the do I have your permission to? Um, I I don't see any wavy lines here. Um, so I don't know that we necessarily have any bad grammar here, um, but if I find oh, well, I think if, you're if, asking accountants for bad grammar. Is that if, if I if I find some bad grammar um, without changing the sure. content of the sentence, sure. do I have your permission to yes. add a make it look pretty? Yeah. Add a comma or if yeah. necessary or whatever. And okay, you can use color if you want to. Yeah. Okay, I love right. <laughs> Let's stay within the lines. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think it gets, I think all the frustrations and everything that we've heard, I think those three slides, pretty, those two slides pretty much say. And yeah. do you, do you want to slide four with this next steps? Not yet. I don't think, I think you're right by, by keeping it simple. Yeah. The only thing you would have to, the only thing you would have to do is say full report 
Mar in March. Or, or you could ver or you could verbalize it. Verbalize it. Yeah. Or you could verbalize it. Yep. Okay. Um, now here's the next question. So I'm going to prepare this PowerPoint for for you. What meeting, okay, yes. What meeting do you want to deliver this PowerPoint at? What city council meeting? And who's going to deliver it on behalf of the committee? Are you going to elect your chair to do it? Um, you know, who's, are you going to basically decide amongst yourselves, make a motion and, and elect somebody to deliver this? Two people to deliver it, to kind of both go up to the podium? Um, we need to work and out those you, logistics. Uh, so, so not a receiving file. Mm -hmm. Right. You want? Right. I got it. You want regular business. It'll be regular business. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. Well, I mean, it could go on. See, the other thing is, it could go on consent calendar, and someone could pull it, and then we would discuss it anyway. So, it can be regular business because I think I think Measure X is such an important part of the city going forward mm -hmm. that it probably needs to be regular business. Okay. And it wouldn't be a long discussion, but you know. So, any thoughts as to which council meeting do you want to try for the January? Well, we have to do one in March, right? What are the, what what dates are the ones in March? The council meetings in March, because well, that's what we're going to have. The to March do one is where your full report is. Right, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, gotcha. It's the first and third. What is it? Yeah. First and third Tuesday. So it's uh. What? Wow. Um, so March third and March seventeenth. So so technically, I mean, the per the language, it says during the March our March meeting, mm -hmm. which would be then it would be presented in April um, well actually if our March meetings early in the month we could present could it, at it, council yes. March 17th right mm -hmm. so okay Let, let's but that's the full do, do we have a pre well, we, I think we have a pre-scheduled date yeah for I do have a pre-scheduled date and it is March 11th so it'd be a week before the council meeting yep yeah, but then you don't you don't have time to make the agenda packet oh So first things awesome first, day. so this one has to be, we have to get this on in January, so probably end of January, the last meeting in January. Yeah, because the first meeting of January has been canceled. I see. So <laughs> if you want to take this to the council, your next opportunity is going to be January 21st. As far as availability goes, I should be here, meaning to say I should mm -hmm. be in town. Okay. And regardless of who goes up and, and sure. uh, presents this, I plan to show up yeah, to support anybody that got on this committee i mean from a um for me personally i'm i'm i'm, I'm impressed with the uh, member leo's ability to to, to speak to dance on my feet that's the problem <laughs> man um i should be in town uh, I'm, I'm happy to do it if you guys want me to do it yeah, yeah. I, I would be more than happy to have you do it but, but I, I will be there uh, to show, show support, support also and, yeah. and hold your uh, briefcase <laughs> I'm going to have three slides. That's all. You give me the financial lingo, man. Okay, so our, did somebody make a motion? And I, I motion that uh, Member Leo presents. Okay. Second. Okay. Say all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. We have, um, yeah, sorry. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, am I pretty? <laughs> Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine going up there with him. I, I would also suggest we send a, a member, uh, Tim, here with him, as he's a financial lingo guy, so I think that might be a good thing. Okay. If, so you're making yeah. a motion for member Johnson to assist? That's correct. To stand next to you. Second. As we go through this. Okay. You got a second. Great old man. <laughs> okay. And do you want to call for that vote, your motion and your second? Uh, yes, I'd like to call for a vote on that. Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 So, this is the 21st, is that right? Yep, January 21st. Okay, so one last time, I'm giving you an off-ramp here. Um, can, can we take just a, a five-minute pause here and have you independently reread this? and make sure that you are all comfortable because we we live and work in this political environment mm -hmm. and you you know you want to make sure that we are um you know uh 
how should I say, uh, create the most um, positive working relationship that we can mm -hmm. um, in your advisory role to the city council. I want I want you as a committee to be successful. Sure. And I want you to have a positive impact on you know going forward. So I just want you to make absolute sure that you are happy with these statements. Um, I'll just be blunt that you don't feel like you're, you know, burning any bridges or, um, you know, setting up any adversarial relationships or anything like that. So I, did, I would encourage you to just take a pause, read it, make sure this is really, this, this is what you want to, where you want to go. Are you able to comment from a, I mean, this is obviously our report. Right. Mm -hmm. um, do you have concerns that this is... Um, too too harsh of language is this too uh, uh, non-political or I mean what what, what um, do you have concerns? Half of that stuff up there you've probably told them. Oh, I have, yeah. But it's, but it's different coming yeah. from in a public right, well, forum. Well, too. Well, and, no, and, no, you, and you have to be very careful with the way that you word things. I mean, I've been working in this this environment sure. for a long time, and Understood. you are much more successful if you learn how to. Understood. You know. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think your content is fine. A lot of it is a lot of it is fact-based statement, and that's good. That's always a good place to be in this environment. Um, you know, to to your one of your notions. Uh, member Leo, you had mentioned about thanking the citizens mm -hmm. for, um, and I know that that would be part of your annual, your uh, your annual report. But you may want to consider a, a quick statement on slide one that says, you know, each committee member feels a sense of duty. You know, something like, you know, the committee thanks the. Uh, city council for well, giving gonna, them the opportunity I to was serve. Gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna use that Vo in my ver my both. verbal stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean verbally, I was gonna say, you know, we're okay. all, you know, we're happy to serve, and mm -hmm. you know, because that's just generally thank you for letting me serve. You know, you always say thank you or thank you for giving me the opportunity to comment. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. here we go. And then, what about answering the obvious question of um, why are you bringing this to us now? We are bringing this to you now because in in just a few meetings we've uncovered some things that we wanted to let you know about prior to us providing you a full report in March. Okay. And and that's pretty what what we've been able to glean from a, our meetings. This is what we glean. We want to let you know. We didn't want to bring you any surprises in March. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're? But by that statement, though, we're implying that they don't know this. I. I, I would I would my feeling is there's so much going on that sometimes the basic block and tackle stuff I mean these folks live it sometimes it's in one ear out the other they're focused on so I mean okay. I mean right now if you were to look at the council and the, the the arguments that they're having over homelessness and some of the other things are just massive things they think the budget's in rolling along just fine they they don't they don't they don't look at it all the time like that. They'll ask Catherine some questions from the dais, but mm -hmm. they think the but hey, we got tax money, budget's okay, let's keep going, and people are here to ask for more money. That's I mean, I think when I listen to the council, I mean that's what part most of it's about. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I'd then like I think ministerially, um, we may need to ask permission of the mayor or the city manager or somebody. Who, who actually holds the power to set the agenda here at the city? 
I think it's the city manager. City manager, yeah. city manager yeah. and then the, there's a certain yeah. time for the 85A and 85B. Yeah, I was, I was looking to if this yeah. would fall under the commission committees 13, where, it's, where all the people are, where all the folks are appointed to boards. Obviously, that's not what you're doing here. Our, you know, and mm -hmm. what yeah. you're doing, and then there's yeah. the um, the committee reports. That those are council committees, right? Yeah, made up of or the reports, uh, 65A stuff. The 85A is more the right. city council indicates, hey, we don't like to provide staff direction, city manager direction to, right. to do X, Y, well, and Z. You okay. guys will figure it out. How, how about this? Um, I mean, it goes somewhere. In here, here's what I would like to do. Okay. So we've received your direction. You've crafted your statements. I would like to take this draft well, these the sure. statements, because they're not draft anymore, you, right. you've, you've basically finaled them, except for maybe a period or a comma is, is what I may find, um, is to take these statements to the city manager and basically make sure that she is supportive of you bringing this forward as a, as a preliminary, you know, just, just a preliminary heads up to the city council on January 21st. She... Works, she is, works the closest with the city council members out of mm -hmm. all of the city. And so <coughs> if she sees a great problem with this, maybe she's thinking of something that I can't think of, and she sees some terrible, you know, like, no, mm -hmm. stop, you don't want to do this for these reasons, um, then what I would promise to do is and and I could do this very quickly like say in the next couple of business days is to get back to the committee and pull you for some January meeting dates so that we can reconvene with the city managers advice and then you can make a decision and go from there how does that sound that that way it kind of it kind of I I know that you guys have a desire to do this I just want to make sure that um, you know we're not that the, the city manager is supportive of it. I think it would be good if you had the city manager's support before going to council. And and she's a very reasonable person. And, and I think our timing is is fine with that because I mean we're shooting for end of January. Right, and, January twenty first. Yeah. I mean, our, to where if if this has to get pushed pushed into February, mm -hmm. I don't think that that's a Okay. If it gets pushed into February, then I would just issue. roll it in. I would roll it into the March annual oh, okay. report, annual report at that. Okay. Point. Mm -hmm. well, so, but remember, the March annual report is we're supposed to be meeting in March to go over the annual report, which means that that's actually presented do either at well, the, the very end of March this, this, or in the. Either way, these I think either way, these are either preliminary slides that go in February or they're the early slides of the March structure, the okay. annual report. Because I think that, and I could be wrong, but I think the city manager is going to say, I think I try to tell them the city council this all the time, and sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Because I haven't heard, Catherine, you say anything much different than what we've said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your concerns about expenses exceeding revenues, mm -hmm. the city manager at the chamber meeting said the same thing. Mm -hmm. She said things start to go like this after another year. Mm -hmm. So it's not, nothing's new. Yeah, okay. And I think that some of the things that we're recommending are basic accounting principles, mm -hmm. basic things that for whatever reason, political reasons mostly, they choose to veer from. And we're trying to remind them, do not veer from them, please. Okay. And, and, and I think to me that's the easiest thing. And so. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what you've got here is, pretty, is good. I, I really do. I just I just want to you know have the out that if if for some reason I, I take this to the city manager and she's like whoa wait a second here and she's got some serious concerns with it um, I think that I I would advise you to trust her intuition and meet again in January to reconvene with her advice how does that sound I agree with that I'm fine with that you're fine with that. <sighs> Uh, I'm, I'm not totally fine with it, but I'll agree okay. with the rest of the committee. Um, so you don't want to hear from two of us. Yeah. Well, uh, I just don't like the idea that this book becomes a political committee. Again, mm -hmm. I'm a citizen advocate, and mm -hmm. I think that's my role. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that I need to be concerned about the feelings of the council. 
Okay. I hate to put it that way, because too much of what I've seen going on here is about the concerns of the council and what they want to do. We're in this boat because of what they didn't do in the first place. So mm -hmm. my concern is I don't want to politicize this committee. Okay. I want to keep it. That's just my opinion. That's my concern. I'm a citizen advocate. I'm a citizen of the city. I'm not a politician. Don't have any intending of, any intent of being coming a politician. So that is my only concern that this becomes politicized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't want it to become politicized for you either. I just want you guys to be able to provide your sound advice to the city council from you know uh, from the citizen perspective and and be very successful. Well, I think I could add my two cents, and, and along with uh, uh, Commissioner Abigail. But I, I will say this: that w when w you were discussing this, and you started to ask us to carefully consider what we're going to present, mm -hmm. um, I think the measuring stick that that I held and I was comfortable with is. If anybody, any resident in the city were to look at this, would I be okay with them looking at it, less the city council looking at that? Okay. I, I'm, I, I am, I have no political affiliation and to council, um, council member Solorio's, you know, um, I'm not sure what the word is, but you know, to his benefit, I think, it, you know, the fact that I came there and told him I have no interest in any politics and I have no affiliation with anybody in the council member and he still chose for me to be here um, I applaud him for that because I really have I, I know nobody here has seen me before there's a reason behind that because I've never wanted to be part of these things but I volunteered knowing full well that this measure is very important to the citizens and when I look at the statement I think the statement will hold the test of time okay so I think maybe I think the nicest way to put it is let the city manager know. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to talk to mm -hmm. her, let her know we're pretty hell bent on going forward with what we got. Yeah, and, and so I will do that. So unless it's going to blow up, then yeah, and we're I will go do ahead. that. And I and and from my perspective, this is when I look at it, we're stating the obvious. Mm -hmm. I think we're stating the obvious and saying, hey, look, before you jump down the next rabbit hole that you're going to jump down, think about what we said to you. The voters were kind enough to give you money. Please be mindful of their money and what they want it spent on. And I think Keith's kind of expressing it in that way. He's like, hey, I'm here to advocate for my neighbors. I'm not here to advocate for anybody else. I'm here to make sure the money gets spent how we thought it was going to get spent. And I think, I think we should be okay. I mean, I think she'll, I, don't, I, I can't imagine she's going to say it's on fire. They may not like what we say, but half the time they don't like what you say, right? <laughs> so it's not, I mean... It is what it is, and I think we should, it, it's out there. I mean, every time I see a grand jury report and I see how upset the county gets, well, obviously you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing, or they found a hole in your service. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, and we're here to oversee the money, and just like the Measure, Measure M has an oversight commission, so be it. But if, if, you, if, if, you, if, you feel comfortable, if you feel you need to go to her, I don't have an issue with it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of, I'm kind of in Keith's camp and mm -hmm. Commissioner Lucas' camp. I, 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 I agree. Will. I mean, if you take it to her as a heads up, as a courtesy, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. But mm -hmm. if, it, like I say, if it becomes, right, if she wants to influence our decision, I'm opposed to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that simple. Thank yeah. you. But I mean, and I think administratively, though, she controls the agenda. That's right. Yeah. So, so she's going to see so it then, anyway. So, right. So, I mean, I, I think that, you know, no, I don't think anyone on this uh, committee wants to have this politicized. But, I mean, it's she she be. controls the, the agenda. And to where I would prefer, instead of her just saying, you know, we're not going to, you know, you guys are supposed to present in March or April, um, you know, your annual. That's what you've been charged with. You know, Go any ahead. one of us could go there and speak as an individual anytime we wanted yes. to, um, but I would prefer it to be as part of the, the process um, as opposed to the exception. And, you know, and if she has a, a you know, ho hopefully she would, um, you know, if she doesn't think that this is the right thing, she can come and advise us to why it wouldn't be. And hopefully that advice is not because of political you know, reasons mm -hmm. that it's like, mm -hmm. hey, you guys, yeah. you know, just don't, you oh. know, here are the couple of things that you need to um, consider. Mm -hmm. That's a fair and, statement. I agree. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. okay. 
So do you need a motion from us or we we'll covered everything? No, we have our okay. direction from you. We're good. All right. Okay. Is that it? We have adjourn, right? No. Uh, motion to adjourn? No. And then the staff comments, and I have a few. Okay. We don't have any public Nope, nope. no public comments. No public comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Staff member comments. Okay. Um, I have just a couple here. Uh, so our new council member, uh, Becerra, mm -hmm. he has a, he's been provided with a list of all the committees that he needs to make appointments to, which obviously includes this one. So he is fully aware of it. Um, on the December 17th agenda, he's uh, got some nominations on there for the Planning Commission and ETAC. Mm -hmm. um, so we expect that at some point he'll come up with an oversight committee, okay. but it just hasn't happened yet. Um, the uh, You had mentioned that the next in line that you wanted to see, uh, based on my notes from your previous meetings, was uh, a combination of planning and building and community development mm -hmm. um, at your next meeting. And so right now, um, you are adjourning to your March 11th meeting, and so I would expect that we would have um, both planning and building and CDA on that agenda. Does that sound correct to the committee? And then um, I just wanted to point out, even though I provide your, you with the monthly updates by email of our revenue, um, for six months of revenue, it, it just forget about the fiscal years, you know, that some is in this year, some is in that year, some of it's late, this and that. The bottom line is six cash payments that we've received have totaled $29,545,000 to date. So just a hair shy of the um, $30 million. But again, we know that some of the corrections are trickling in. Sure. So, you know, I still feel very good about our $60 million estimate. And then um, the last thing that I wanted to share with you was uh, we just closed on our gas tax refunding bonds. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because uh, our interest savings on that, on doing, it's kind of like refinancing your mortgage, mm -hmm. um, is 940000 an average of $940,000 a year that that money can be used for fixing streets going does forward. It, does it, does that money, when you refinance the bonds, does it specifically go back to the general fund or does it go? No, this is gas tax money. It's gas tax money can, only, tax be used on money can okay. only be used on roadway maintenance, Excellent. which includes the full roadway, to be fair. Pavement, sidewalks, it's okay. medians, traffic signals, the whole deal, the roadway right. is all is all, you know, fair game for gas tax money. But my point is almost a million dollars is getting freed up. And obviously you all remember the presentation that William made where That's he good. said that he needed some money and, and there it is. Thank so those you. are all my comments. Uh, committee member member comments. Any final passing thoughts? None for me. None for me. None for me. Yeah, I'm just super appreciative of, uh, of Catherine uh, responding so timely to all, you know to my questions and all those types of, types of things and the information that you're providing to us. I think it's invaluable, and I really appreciate the the time that you put into uh, working with us. Thanks. I, well, I would second that, and uh, again. Um, Let's keep this uh, committee for the public and not for the politicians. Thank you. So are you adjourning the meeting? Uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. Thanks okay. for all showing up. Thank you. Thank you.